The Flanders Classic season is in full swing and we're in Belgium for the 77th running of the one they call the Sprinters Classic, Ghent Wevelgem. It's only 40 kilometers from the race start in Denzen near Ghent to Wevelgem, but the bike riders like to take the scenic route, uh, which means they'll be pedaling for almost 240 kilometers around Flanders Fields this afternoon and taking in some very tough Hellingen climbs along the way. I'm Declan Quigley, Brian Smith is alongside, and we're getting set for a sporting battle of epic proportions on cycling's most famous one-day classic roads this afternoon. As you can see, the weather is absolutely perfect for typical Belgian classics racing. That is to say, it's horrible out there. Driving wind and rain all day, the riders uh, emerging from the buses at the last possible moment at sign-on this morning, eventually uh, making their appearance. A few uh, drowned rats standing up on the podium ahead of sign-on, representing Top Sport Vlaanderen. And of course, uh, they have Wallace in absolutely fine form and perhaps uh, a favourite for honours this afternoon. So lots of uh, local favourites that will be in the mix. And uh, Adam Blythe as well, perhaps, uh, could be able to do a job for Orica Green Edge. So this is the scene at the start uh, in the start town of Denza this morning, a little bit outside of Ghent, ahead of this uh, fabled race. 1934, the first edition. This is the 77th Ghent Wevel game this afternoon. In Flanders Fields now, the subheading to this race. It's uh, uh, in uh, memoriam, you might say, to the First World War. 100 year anniversary. 1914, of course, and so many of the uh, battles played out in the uh, First World War took place on the roads. Subsequently made famous by riders of the caliber of Greg Van Avermaet. Van Avermaet uh, involved in the crashes that characterized uh, E3 just a couple of days ago. Wasn't able to get into the mix in the final there as a result of, uh, of hitting the ground, but he's, uh, they make them off certain stuff around here. And Greg Van Avermaet's a tough Belgian who has managed to drag himself onto his bike to see what he can do this afternoon about adding Gent Wevelgem to his Palmaris. Seb van Mark is a man who knows that uh, he needs to try and get out of the peloton and up the road because this, as I say, is known as the Sprinters Classic. We've got nine tough hills and, of course, the uh, Kennelberg, the most famous of the lot, is traversed on two occasions. The second of those comes 38 kilometres before the line. The final climb of the Monteberg, 34k out. Bradley Wiggins makes his appearance and... He's not the most famous uh, English rider in classics uh, riding at the moment because that, you would have to say, is... Well, I was going to say it was Geraint Thomas. He's a Welshman. And uh, the Manxman, Mark Cavendish. Well, in many people's favourite for honours this afternoon. He's got uh, Master Random and Etix Quick Step team. That's one of the strongest in World Tour racing. And this is one... Uh, one of the few gaps left on his Palmaris. So Mark Cavendish with great hopes this afternoon, although I can tell you there's been a lot of action already this afternoon, and the Etix Quickstep riders have been involved in some of the crashes that are happening in the echelons that are forming out on the coast. So we'll uh, update you with that very shortly. John Degenkolb, winner of Milan San Remo just over a week ago, and he looks very relaxed indeed, and why wouldn't he? He's already got a monument under his belt for 2015, so things already... Uh, on the up and the pressure is off for him but look at those conditions ahead of the riders managing to find a smile there's plenty in there will be grimacing at the thought of what awaits them this afternoon well my name is Declan Quigley alongside is uh, Brian Smith at DQ Sport for myself at Bryce Smithy hashtag home of cycling please do get involved because uh, we've got some very interesting racing for you this afternoon and uh, please do get involved in the conversation. Brian, this the scenes as the riders headed out this morning, absolutely miserable conditions and uh, just the way you love them if you're watching bike racing. Yeah, and some people get inspiration from it as well. They know that uh, many of the riders are not looking forward to this, as we've seen in Duado of Landeren. The race split apart, that was uh, Wednesday's uh, race, but good weather for E3, different race altogether. But uh, today they head from uh, Dainza out to the coast towards uh, Depana, and then they get the cross wind sections, which we've just had, and uh, plenty of echelons. The group, the main group, is split into about three groups. Crashes, Gert Stegmans is out, Pozzato's out, 
you said Cavendish has been involved with a crash. When you say this is a sprinter's classic, classic traditionally, yes. But uh, in these conditions, I think it's going to be go come down to a, a smaller group finish. An early protest delaying the riders. Here is the graphic illustration of just the uh, the route that the riders are taking today. So sort of in uh, four parts this race as the riders uh, warm up on flat roads, such as it is, followed by a left turn and a run along the uh, coastal dunes. Plenty of tough energy sapping crosswinds there. Then left again and head uh, east towards the key battleground circuit with two ascents of the famous Kemmelberg, followed by a 30-odd kilometre dash to the finish line in Welvegan. Here's the scene out front. Maximum advantage for these riders, well over eight minutes, but that's been whittled down now to just two minutes and 15 seconds as a result of some pretty frenetic racing that's going on behind. The group, uh, the main group, is split into at least three parts at the moment, we understand, but these riders continuing to toil in the wind. And look at the way they're struggling to keep those front wheels uh, going in. Uh, in one direction, it's absolutely hell for the riders today, and they're slogging away as best they can, sharing the pace. And these, the uh, seven riders out front, we'll uh, give them a bit of a name check. Alexis uh, Gujard is there for AG Tuorla Mondial. He's in the brown kit. The Grimace just uh, rolling through to the front. The man in the orange colors of Team Rompot is the 21-year-old uh, Netherlands rider, Tim Kirchhoff. And uh, coming to the front now is Alex Dowsett of Movistar. Perhaps the star in this group, Giro d'Italia stage winner a couple of years ago. He's taken many, many top scalps in uh, time trials over the last couple of years. Started out with Team Sky, now with Movistar, and making a real name for himself. He's got uh, bigger fish to fry later in April. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Giant Alpacine are uh, represented by Albert Timmer. Good news for John Degenkolb. His team don't have to chase. They have uh, Timmer in there. Tinkoff... Uh, Saxo are represented by the uh, very experienced Russian Pavel Brut, 33 years of age now. And I think that's pretty much everyone. Mirko Tedeschi also involved in the, uh, in the breakaway group for the Southeast squad, 26 years of age, second year on the team. So seven riders out front. As I say, they uh, managed to get themselves out of the peloton very early on indeed. Bunch happy to let them go, up over eight minutes, but uh, there's lots and lots of activity behind as a result of which now they just have two minutes and 12 seconds advantage and they'll do well to hang on to this. Jesse Sargent, I forgot to mention him, the New Zealander, 26 years of age, top time trialist in his own right, of course. Brian, uh, several of the uh, top teams putting a rider into the break early on, that gives them a little bit of a free pass in terms of chasing puts the pressure on some of the other sprinter squads. Yeah, that's what I noticed straight away. Uh, Tinkoff putting uh, a rider in there, uh, Pavel Brut. And Pavel Brut, this man here, the oldest man in this group at 33 year olds. The Russian six years with Katusha, so he just popped over onto the Tinkoff Saxo team. Seven pro wins in his uh, career. Strong, strong rider, one of them being a stage of the Giro d'Italia. So a strong rider to get in a break like this. It does mean that uh, Tinkoff do not have to do as much of the uh, chasing and the riding on the front like they did in the E3 Harold Becker. But a lot of the roads, very similar, small. So, you know, they'll have to do some sort of work in the peloton to keep uh, Peter Sagan uh, out of uh, trouble. But the other big team, as you mentioned, uh, Giant Alpesin, Dif different on the black bike, but predominantly just coming through is uh, Albert uh, Timmer uh, in the black with the uh, red flashes on his sleeves. A lot of black in the peloton, so kind of hard to describe. But uh, yeah, it's, it's important that uh, last year's winner puts a rider in the uh, breakaway and seven riders in the, in the break. You just see the, the speed is uh, down at about uh, 30 k's an hour now, so really struggling into this kind of head crosswind. This is the main peloton, and the main peloton is reduced to about 100 riders. So BMC on the front, Arica Greenedge uh, just to their right. BMC, of course, in, in the red colours. And then riders from uh, Lotto Sedal also making their way to the front. Matty Breschel just coming up there. So uh, Matty Breschel coming up through the cars. A lot of riders have been uh, trouble getting off their, um, their rain capes. And, uh, you know, with this buffet and wind, very, very dangerous conditions for all the riders. 
the riders trying to make their way back into the main Mark group. Cavendish. And there is Mark Cavendish, because I can tell you there was a very serious accident uh, about, oh, about 15, 20 kilometers ago, which has claimed at least two of his teammates. Cavendish as uh, Trenton, his Italian domestique, great sprinter in his own right, who's managed to shepherd him back into the safety of the main bunch. But just how much has that taken out of him? Because Mark Cavendish has uh, definitely been made to work for this. And uh, as we mentioned, Several non-finishers already uh, to announced today. Gerd Stegeman, as we understand, has been taken to hospital uh, following that accident. Not really sure on the extent of his injuries. We'll update you if we hear, but we have also heard that uh, Martin Velitz has broken his collarbone and he's out. So two significant engines for Mark Cavendish no longer in the fray. We wish them well in the recovery. For Mark Cavendish, though, he's got to... Uh, well, they've got to revise their thinking a little bit because, of course, there's... Uh, some significant responsibility on Etik's quick step to contribute to the chase of these riders. Having said that, I think at this stage, uh, the way that the gap is coming down to those riders up front, they're not really thinking so much about chasing them. Uh, the uh, selection is being made itself by the weather conditions and the echelons that are forming at the moment. Don't forget you can get in touch on Twitter at DQ Sport for myself, at Bryce Smithy for the man alongside, hashtag home of cycling. Ben Jackson, 1992, says, uh, do yourself and Brian Smith think Wiggins can actually win Roubaix? If so, surely he will. Well, I'm missing the rest of that, but basically that's the big question. Uh, can he win Paris-Roubaix? Well, we get some, we go some way to finding out the answer to that this afternoon and how he copes with these wind and these conditions and whether he can get towards the front, uh, towards the back end of the, stay, of, the uh, of the day's action. Well, it was a race when he said uh, when he was growing up he wanted to try and win it. Uh, and then he started concentrating on the, uh, the Tour de France, and the two of them really don't mix. Um, it was maybe a surprise to many that he finished ninth last year in Paris-Roubaix because uh, not many uh, Tour de France winners and contenders uh, get involved with that um, cobbled classic. So I think he can because in the past when uh, Bradley puts his mind to something, he does not leave any stones unturned and he'll put on a tremendous performance. We have lost uh, Tom Bonin in Paris-Nice uh, th with uh, an injury and uh, in E3 we lost um, Cancellara. So we've lost uh, two very um, you know, important riders for, uh, for Paris-Roubaix but there's still a lot of good riders left. The likes of um, um, Sagan and uh, Seth Van Mark and, and these set of riders and also the, you've got um, uh, last year's winner as, uh, as, as well, so it's uh, it's going to be difficult for uh, uh, Wiggins, but I definitely think he's he'll be concentrating on it, and uh, you know let let's wish uh, the best of luck because it's about time that uh, we see a, a British win winner of a, a monument like that. Yeah, it was interesting. It, Bradley Wiggins' comments. He was saying that the dynamic has changed as a result of uh, Tom Bonham's departure from the fray for the classic season. Fabian Cancellara as well, also injured and out. Uh, and that's, uh, you might say, was, has definitely played towards Wiggins and his chances of taking victory in that race. But he said now it's the responsibility of Team Sky, especially given their performances in the early races in the classic season, uh, that it's now up to them to, uh, to step up and to take control of the races. He, he, he was inter very interesting in his comments about Etik's quick step. He said, without Bonin, who really gels and, and knits the team together, the, you know, there's lots of riders that believe that they have their own ambitions to go for, and it's a little less of a cohesive unit uh, in that situation. He was quite forthright in his comments, and I thought it was a, an interesting observation. Was it one that you would agree with? Totally, 100%. I know that. I know that uh, the team of Etik's uh, quick step are, are not gelled together uh, as a team unit. OK, when it comes to uh, when Mark Cavendish is there looking after him, yeah, they, they ride really well and they're really supportive of Cavendish. But the classics riders, they all think they can win. Uh, you know, they're strong enough riders and they don't help each other. Just look at what happened uh, when um, Ian Stannard attacked and uh, Omlop had noise blood and, you know, there was three of them there. Tactics, they got it so wrong. OK, they were up against the stronger man. The strongest man won in the end. And that was Ian Stannard from uh, Team Sky. But... Uh, Again, you look at the tactics in some of the other races, even uh, Eduardo Flander in the week. They had a couple of strong riders in the group behind, but yet Kwiatkowski, the uh, Belgian champion, was uh, you know, not deciding to wait. So Wilfred Peters came up and just said, look, no, no, don't ride so hard. And um, he ended up fourth in the end. So 
It's difficult. You have to question Stebar. Did he, the fraction of a second, he waited for um, Sagan to react to Thomas. By that time, Thomas had gone and, 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 and lost the race. They had Trenton behind, who was a fast sprinter. So, again, it's big decisions. And unless you make these big decisions and big calls, then mistakes are, are made. But the problem is with uh, Teeks Quick Step is they all believe they can win, as, as uh, Bradley says. Yeah, you called it at the time on Friday. You said that if uh, that it was a great opportunity for Geraint Thomas when he attacked because there was every likelihood that uh, Pedro Sagan and and uh, Sagan and and, um, uh, and Stebar would actually look at each other, and there was that moment's hesitation when Stebar realised that Sagan wasn't going to do the chasing; he was going to have to do it himself. And by then, well, Geraint Thomas had got the lead that he needed. And that uh, I don't that think many people would thought he would blow like that. Uh, with three of them being there, we knew that Geraint couldn't leave it to a sprint like uh, the year before and he got beaten. Um, Sagan, obviously the strongest in the, uh, in the sprints, but that's what happens. That's bike racing. He, he blew up just at the right, uh, at the right time for Geraint. He went. Um, Stebar looked at uh, just a fraction of a second to um, Sagan. He never reacted, and by that time, uh, Geraint was gone. But I just still think that Geraint was the strongest rider and he won the race. Luca Paolini for Katusha in the uh, safety in the main group, um, along with a lot of riders choosing to uh, stay with the leg warmers for now, although he's clearly given himself the, uh, the quick option of removing those. Interesting, no number on the back of his bike either, so every chance I think that he's already been on the floor and had to take, uh, had to take a spare bike, some mechanical issue or perhaps a crash. Crash is uh, decimating the peloton, but they're still out there racing at the moment. 148 now to the seven riders up front as they grind along in the wind. All sorts of dramas and difficulties for the riders in Ghent, Wevelgem. 240 kilometers in total, and Sylvain Chavanel. A little bit of a wardrobe malfunction there for the experienced Frenchman. He'll love these conditions, but he won't be enjoying the fact that he can't get his cape off. And the weather conditions improving. We've seen uh, riders divesting themselves of all sorts of uh, jackets and extra bits of clothing in the last few kilometers. Still the situation remaining. Seven riders up front and a large chasing group now, which was split into three groups as a result of crashes and the wind. Now that's, uh, they've pretty much come back together again. The riders leaning in, <laughs> it's incredible the way they're leaning in to try and uh, counter the influence of the wind, which I clearly think is probably coming from the right. This is dangerous. I know there's been a lot in the past about uh, the safety of the riders, but you can just see the wind coming from the left of the screen, really blowing the riders <coughs> across the road. And in fact, that shot we've just seen, you know, they were right and they're kind of leaning into the wind. Um, not the best conditions at all. and. Uh, these are dangerous, and that's why you can see that the riders been blown off onto the ditch. There's a, one of the Tinkoff riders. Everybody's been blown and buffeted over. So dangerous for a lot of riders, and I, I think that there is a little bit of restraint in the peloton. See, Mark Brammy or just comes to the front. They all get blown straight over. Half of the team from uh, BMC get blown, and Stein. You know, these are big riders just getting wang over onto the ditch, and. Um, this is a big, big danger, and we've seen races uh, stop for more than this. Well, they're incredible the way those riders, and they are big, strong riders. They're the strongest bike riders in the world, and they're desperately trying to stay on the uh, on the tarmac. They've just been ripped across the road. There are no deep section rims in there, I can tell you today. The reports before the start of the race were an uh, expectation of gusts of up to 90 kilometers an hour, and that, well, when riders are suddenly, and look at the way it has caused all sorts of carnage in the group. So the bunch having got itself back together after that last uh, foray or that last uh, flurry of echelon action is once again split to bits. There's a lot of riders not liking this at all. Another rider in the ditch here falling off, uh, one of the Cannondale riders. We've already seen Van Bau on the deck. Riders absolutely all over the place. and. You can just see the riders being buffeted the whole time by this wind coming from their left-hand side. Mark Cavendish up right towards the front, but again, if we get this buffet of wind across, touch of wheels, bang, they could all come down. So um, it's really dangerous conditions out here today. Luca Padini's made his way to the front. 
We saw him at the back a little while earlier, but I think he's realised that uh, the only way to stay safe uh, in this one is to go to the front and absolutely drive it as best you can. Just to staying on your bike is an achievement here. Well, you can just see, Terstra, the, the safest place to be is at the front because if you get buffeted, um, you've not got any kind of wheels overlapping in front of you. So a lot of riders, I feel for a lot of riders on this. I've, I've been here, I've done this, and uh, Edvard Bossenhagen not really liking this uh, at all. Former winner of this race, now riding for MTN Quebec. So a lot of riders just uh, not liking these conditions one bit. Yeah, and they are slightly deep section wheels on Edval Bosenhagen, as pointed out by uh, Marty GT80. There are uh, several riders in there with uh, deep section, perhaps not as deep as they would normally ride, but I think anything beyond box section aluminium is... This is uh, absolutely carnage. I, I can't remember. We see cross wins in a race in Belgium, but I've never... I've been training and uh, this has happened and I've actually been blown off the road uh, over the top of the Yaskabel by a, 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 a huge uh, bit of wind off the Atlantic, but I've never seen a race like this where the riders have been blown pretty much off their bikes onto the side verges. Geraint Thomas sitting on the left-hand side of the group at the moment must be feeling very uh, nervous indeed. Another nervous man is Arno Damar, one of the uh, pre-race favourites, second into Evelgem 12 months ago, but now finds himself on one of the chasing one of the chasing echelons, you know, in a way, it might be easier to be in one of the chasing groups as well because they're smaller, because the fight to try and stay in this lead group is proving very, very uh, demanding for lots of the riders. And see the way the uh, professional riders realise that once they've... Uh, they haven't uh, managed to make the front group, they immediately try and form an echelon. And then one or two riders trying to, uh, trying to jump across. It's absolutely mental out there at the moment, I think is the only way to describe it. It's not easy for anybody, and... You can just see the buffets of winds and they're coming over, touch of the wheels, riders have been on the deck and you know, there's a lot of nerves in here and, you know, we get some of these conditions what we've seen in the, the Tour of Qatar. Uh, some riders being blown off the, uh, the roads, but it's uh, in dangerous conditions. Just coming to the front is the Bora team, a rider on the front now, third in the uh, Commonwealth Games last year, Scott Thwaite from Yorkshire. Peter Sagan just comes to the front, but again, bang, he gets buffeted, leaning into this wind. This is really, really dangerous for all these riders. I can't say that more. You can just see um, just behind as well, Stannard's almost been blown off. So, Well, if a guy like Stannard is struggling to keep his bike upright, you know it's windy out there because he's one of the biggest, strongest riders in World Tour racing at the moment. Fantastic to see Scott Thwaites doing so well at the moment. He's a man on great form. I actually have him marked on my sheet as, uh, as a little outside chance, outside bet for victory this afternoon clearly reveling in the conditions such as it's possible to do. And riders being jettisoned in ones and twos. Trek Factory Racing, Danny Van Poppel will definitely have a chance if he makes it to Evel again at the moment. Well, it's a crisis point for him. You just see this is a long, long straight road and, uh, you know, still a few kilometres towards the end of it. The riders at the front still prepared to get involved with the race. Difficult conditions for everybody. I think everybody just uh, crossing their fingers and hoping they get over this uh, really bad section of uh, Windy Road here. Long straight road. Nobody's squeezing the echelon either because everybody needs as much room as possible and you need as much tro many troops as you can possibly get in there. Bora Argon have two riders. Van Mark, visible there on the centre of your screen in the yellow uh, of Lotto Yumbo. We've not even hit the climbs yet. We've still got uh, nine climbs in this race. Still a long way to go. You know, this race, 240 kilometres or 39, and, uh, you know, still 124 kilometres to go, and we're getting this set Van Mark towards the front now, just riders all over the place, and trying to stay as stay safe as possible, but in these conditions, it's very, very difficult. And, of course, there's been quite a lot of talk recently, Brian, about uh, the, a definition. Another problem here. Looks like Mark Cavendish again. Oh, well, that is difficult moments for Mark Cavendish. Wheel puncture. Yeah, it's all happening for him. Stan Vandenberg awaits back with the uh, Manx missile, who watches as another group of riders rolls past. Well, Cavendish seems to have uh, got himself going again. Uh, he's on his own for the next little while. Well, he's had a puncture. He's been on the ditch. And... Uh, 
Not the best of days for Mark Cavendish. Well, if Mark Cavendish comes out with the win this afternoon, it's going to be one of the greatest of his career because the conditions are absolutely hellish out there. But he's managing to uh, fight and survive. He's in the cars. Uh, Probably the safest place to be, Dick, when you get more shelter off one of the cars. It's dangerous in the breakaway, so uh, I think uh, Mark will just want to try and stay there as long as possible. Yeah, very wise indeed. <laughs> Absolute carnage. I don't think I've seen a race like this where the riders are just fighting to stay on the bikes and fighting to stay on the road. Fabulous stuff. If, uh, if all you have to do is watch it. For those in there, testament to a lot of these riders. He put it in maybe another race, some, you know, an amateur race, in these conditions there would be a lot of riders on the ground. These riders are bumping off each other, trying to hold their position, and, uh, you know, they're, they're going from the left to the right-hand side. These are very dangerous conditions, yet we've not seen uh, many crashes on, these, uh, on this road today. Well, just one representative of Team Sky in that lead echelon, and that is uh, the winner of E3, Harold Becker, just a few days ago. Geraint Thomas showing the absolutely fabulous form that he's got. Albert Timmer was indicated as having come back from the brake, so the brake has been uh, mopped up at this point. Mark is not in any rush here to come past these cars. He knows it's carnage in front. A lot safer just to sit there and get the shelter from the car. Well, there's quite a gap between this front group, the next echelon, the next uh, series of groups, but the expectation surely is that uh, when they eventually make the turn left and get away from this, uh, this horrible wind and get something of a tailwind, that, uh, that these groups should knit together. But uh, having said that, with a tailwind, it's, it's tough to make those junctions, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably about uh, 30 seconds from front to back, and um, you know, we're just looking at the direction the race is going in. And... Um, it's not going to be too long till we're off this road. Um, but then again, we've got another long, long straight road to go. We do have a, a change of direction, and you'd think that it's all about uh, having numbers and everybody will look around. They're just concentrating on what they have to do, just being safe, keeping on this road and making sure they're not overlapping wheels. They'll turn round because I, I know that with so many favourites in this front group, Christoph is there. Um, just trying to see um, Sagan is now gone. He's, oh, he's still, is that him still in the back there? So he's still kind of hanging on. So it's how many teammates you've got. Still 120 odd kilometers to go. Terpstra is there. So if you do not have strength in numbers, I think there'll be a general regrouping. Luca Paolini found time for a drink there. That's no mean feat, I can tell you. It's a, <laughs> a great skill. He's the only one. There weren't too, wouldn't be too many that'd be brave enough to attempt to uh, go down and get a bottle out. but. Yes, you have to drink when you have to drink. It's 239.1 kilometers for the riders today. They have to get the food and drink in if they're going to make it through to the finish. Paolini expected to do a job for Alexander Kristoff, the uh, speedy Norwegian. He's on fine form. Oh, and someone had uh, come to grief, but lots of riders. See, they're talking to the jury now. That's what I was trying to say. Possibly if uh, Cancellara had started, he would have been talking to the jury, but uh, you can just see it look like uh, Bernie Iso having a word now. Mark Cavendish is not having a, a word with the uh, Sky team car. It's, it's just, you know, with so much uh, safety put on the peloton nowadays, it's, uh, these are harsh conditions for the riders to, uh, to be involved with today. Pro Sky fan says on Twitter, I don't think I leaned that much when I was on my harness windsurfing. Mark Cavendish is in the cars. He'll hope to get back into the fray very shortly. It's wet and windy in Wethelgem, and we've hit the cobbles. We're back after this short break. Just under 120 kilometers remain in Ghent, Wethelgem. They call it the Sprinters Classic, but there'd be few people, uh, well, there'd be long odds, I think, on it being a large group going to the line at the moment because driving wind and rain on the course uh, this afternoon have decimated the field. They've uh, it's driven it and uh, driven it into several groups on the road. This is the head of the race. They're on the first of nine climbs uh, to be traversed this afternoon, the Castleberg. Uh, it's a relatively shallow climb, but it is on pave. So it's a little bit of a leg breaker for the riders, and bearing in mind what they've faced already. Normally, uh, Brian, they, they kind of work themselves into the, the tough part of the race. It's a gradual wearing down process, but I think there's a a lot of riders are worn out already. I would say so. Uh, normally, you have the breakaway, it goes away as they start heading towards the, the coast. And then we go on to the climbs and the um, the race starts to build up and build up. And it's all about position and, um, you know, how you ride over the Kemmelberg, twice over the Kemmelberg today. But 
due to that long straight road there where the wind was buffeting the riders. The strongest riders will come to the front and battle into the, the wind. Uh, and now we've got a group of um, several of the, uh, the major contenders. Uh, I still think there'll be a, a, a regroupment because nobody, you know, no, not many people want to try and push this on. You can see uh, Lotto Bellis all interested, so is the um, ethics. But uh, I think we'll see a, a kind of general regrouping, but uh, very dangerous conditions. Glad that uh, we didn't see too many crashes. There was some more crashes a lot earlier on, but uh, you rightly said this race has been decimated. Catherine Gale says uh, John Degenkolb must be the smiliest rider ever, surely. Always looks cheerful. I think <laughs> it was smiles at the start, but uh, the, the difference between his smile and his grimace, not a whole lot, really, because uh, I don't think there's anyone smiling out there at the moment. Nasser Bohani desperately trying to get back into contention his uh, Kofidis team marked absent at the moment Orica Greenedge there for company for Buani one of the pre-race favorites sixth in Milan San Remo and everyone wondering whether himself or Arne de Mar could represent France with a victory in Belgium this afternoon so uh, Jürgen Rollins wants to push on here I did see that uh, Andre Greipel was up towards the front you can just see Seberg down towards the back he's looking behind Nicky Terstra is there, last year's uh, Paris Roubaix winner on his wheel, but again, no real impetus uh, towards the front of this uh, group. They're having a wee chat. Uh, I think you'll see a general regroupment. Not everybody will make it back, but uh, very difficult conditions for everybody today. Well, Eric's quick step are not going to chase that one. He's not going to come round. Mark Cavendish still chasing behind. Not exactly sure where he is at the moment, but uh, presumably in the middle of one of those groups, scrabbling to get back into contention. And riders in ones and twos all over the road at this point. It's... Uh, Less echelon, more every man for himself. Hugo Zupa of the Southeast squad. Having a fun day out in Flanders. Justine Libertine uh, asks, uh, tell us if you've ever been blown off a bike. Uh, Brian, you were uh, mentioning that you've actually... Yeah, been twice, twice when I was... Um, when I was training in Scotland uh, on a descent and obviously over the top of the uh, Yaskabel and the San Sebastian, uh, just coming out of San Sebastian, you get the Yaskabel climb as part of the San Sebastian Classic and over the top of the climb, the wind was coming off the Atlantic and I get blown into the ditch. Landed in the ditch and there was about three or four other riders next to me and that was before the deep section wheels and I wasn't that uh, as big as I was now, so you know I was pretty slim then. <laughs> I landed and I landed next to uh, Scott Sunderland and uh, we've been friends ever since. <laughs> That's a way to make friends. Scott meets a Scott. Soft landing. While they're grinding their way out, Stephen Betley just says, uh, well, it's March and the Classics, what do they expect? It's just a bit of wind. Well, I think it's a little bit more than just a bit of wind. I mean, crosswinds will drive things into an echelon. Gusting crosswinds with this level of intensity are going to drive riders off the road. So there's just a little bit... I, mean, I don't want to be sort of an apologist for people who are saying, oh, everything has to be dumbed down and softened up and uh, we well, get different We're an outdoor sport, but, um, you know, there, there has been neutralisation in some races before in the past. It's all about safety. I uh, believe in uh, my lifetime, because of the wind, uh, one of the stages of the Tour of Britain was neutralised um, because of the wind. The, the, even the finishing gantry was being blown away and things like that. So it was safety then. That was a stage into uh, Liverpool a few years ago. Going back in memory serves me right to uh, neutralised stage in the, uh, the milk race, the Tour of Britain. So that has happened in the past. Um, it's in extreme circumstances. And I thought on that straight road there, it did look a bit extreme, but... The riders, uh, because of the conditions and the, you know, the, the rain and things like that, just wanted to forge ahead. We will see some riders trying to make it back to the front, but uh, this race, you know, whoever wins this race is, is going to go down in history. A real hard man, no doubt about it. Geraint Thomas is at the front, must be feeling a bit lonely at the moment. No sign of any other uh, Sky involvement, bearing in mind how impressive they've been in the uh, early season classics. It's a bit, uh, a bit of a disappointment for them, but difficult conditions for everyone and uh, Thomas just rolling through to the front a few moments ago must be wondering uh, quite what he should do no doubt he's uh, on the blower calling for reinforcements Andre Greipel the distinctive figure in the center of shot has also made it in here well this is uh, in fact looks like the second group in the road Declan uh, with uh, Bahani there and uh, Greipel that's why it's a wee bit uh, 
surprised that uh, Jorgen Rollins was uh, pushing on a little bit in the front group because I thought that Greipel was there. He's not. He's in the second group. Jack Bauer now coming to the front in the uh, line green for um, Cannondale Garmin team. Um, so it's we will see a general regroupment and uh, I just think it was a case of uh, Jürgen Rollins wanted to try and keep the, uh, the pressure on and, and probably felt safer in a smaller group in front. Well, it looks as if there isn't quite the same intensity in the league group at the moment and uh, some riders have made the junction and others, I think, are going to get back in, but obviously it will have cost them a lot in terms of energy for later on. I just don't think they know where every, everybody is. We do have race radios today as a World Tour uh, event, but I don't think the uh, sports directors will know because they've got televisions in the car, they've got the radios, uh, the radios will be, the radio tour will be shouting out, um, you know, the numbers and who's in what group, but again, we see no cars, no motorbikes next to this group, so I just think that uh, the sports directors, Adam Bly, now they're pushing hard on the front for the second group here for um, Orica Green Edge, trying to bring um, Orica Green Edge back to the front of the race, but I think in the team cars, they'll just be, um, you know, the information that will be given out is they will not know where all their uh, riders are. Gerard Zielek from MTN Quebec at the front of the lead group on the road which is still uh, relatively small and compact. Some riders have made it back in there, but there's, uh, there's a fair bit of daylight between them and the second group on the road. So there's a lot of very serious sprinters who are marked absent at the moment. Schliebar is pushing on, uh, second in the E3, Harold Becker, uh, the uh, Czech champion, just behind uh, Gerald uh, Selig for MTN Quebec. Behind him, Peter Sagan in the fluorescent uh, yellow top. Uh, just then, John Degenkob was also in this uh, front group. Jempe Drucker in the red in the right-hand side for uh, BMC. We've seen uh, Geraint Thomas, uh, Nicky Terpstra is in this uh, front group. They're just trying to pick up as many people as uh, we can, but uh, this race has been uh, just decimated in these wins. Peter Sagan, one of the pre-race favourites, makes it to the front. He's been on the podium the last three years in this race. He knows how to get round Gent Webelgem and come up with a result occupied each step of the podium in the last three years. Will he be able to make it a six, second successive victory? we bet against it at the moment. Very much a small select group. Chasing hard. Oh. Group two now uh, indicated at 37 seconds. Dan Worry on Twitter says, uh, is there a jersey for most uh, kilometers ridden sideways? If there is, there'll be some scrap for it today. I'm sure all their bike computers are going to show they've done a lot more than 239 kilometers at the end of today. Just looking at Matt Heyman now. The car actually right. Oof. You don't normally see that. The car actually moving towards the uh, the um, one of the groups. So Matt Heyman, the front of the uh, chase group, he's getting help from uh, Jack Bauer from Cannondale. Now, the GPS, not always the most reliable, it should be said, is indicating that the gap is stretching between that front group and the chase group. So while the head of the race appears not to be, uh, well, it doesn't seem to be particularly intense, it's still very effective. Riders coming back or riders going forward? The former, I would suggest. This is Selig of uh, Kutusha. I think he's been, uh, he's coming back into this uh, second chase group. Selig was uh, involved with a crash in Duardo Blander and he was uh, one of the riders that ended in the ditch, but uh, he was trying to help one of the uh, IM riders uh, that was uh, found uh, on the road unconscious. So really sportsmanship from uh, the rider from Katusha. Henrik Hausler trying to chase to come back. Would have been the big favourite for Iam Cycling. Well, he loves the classics, but he's just trying to get a, a rear wheel. But he's in this uh, front group. But as we see from these small roads, and because there's groups everywhere, neutral service is not there. Neither is the, the team car. So unfortunately, an untimely puncture for the uh, the Iam team. You know, one of their leaders punctured at the wrong time, and is now having to uh, to go back to. Um, the, uh, the group behind and possibly the uh, team cars will be behind that. So unfortunate for the uh, Australian champion, Heinrich Hausler. Now we're on hill number two. It's the uh, 
say the second ascent of the Castleberg. And now they're saying it's inside 30 seconds and coming down very quickly indeed to the lead group. Yes, Daniel Walsh is now uh, pushing hard. You see, just further down, slightly in the more in the orange uh, ring camp, Greg Van Avermaet is in this group, so that's the reason why you've got BMC pushing hard at the front. Towards the front of the race, this is the front group. You've got Bram Tankink in the right-hand side, Seth Van Mark in the left-hand side, but they're not really pushing on. I do think there'll be a general regroupment and BMC will be able to bring back their team leader, Van, uh, Greg Van Avermaet, who had a bad crash, crash on Friday in the E3 Harold Becker. So how do you play it if you're someone like Seth Van Mark who knows that he can't go to the line with some of the bigger sprinters? It's a long, long way out to commit to, uh, to a move like this, but he dearly would love to, uh, to ensure that some of the big sprinters don't make it back in and then see if he can eliminate those that have made it in uh, a little bit later on. I think over the last uh, 10, 20 kilometres, maybe slightly more, it's been hard for everybody. And you're right, it's a long, long way to go. Uh, there was a, a group of about uh, 20 riders in the front, but nobody really wanted to push hard and keep the momentum going. So um, I think this race is just going to get harder and harder. Again, Heinrich Hausler is still getting problems. He's uh, pulling to the side of the road. He cannot ride a flat tyre over this, uh, these cobble sections. So unfortunately for um, I am, he is uh, out the race with a pretty much an untimely puncture. Unless he can get a quick change and get into the second group, he might find himself pretty much at the back. Get another uh, puncture here for um, Paddy Roubaix winner from last year, Nicky Terpstra. So all sorts of problems for Eric's quick step. And interesting what their tactics are now. Have they abandoned Mark Cavendish to his own fate? We've seen Stebar going through willing to set the tempo, willing to contribute on the front of the group. Well, Otto Jumbo are uh, just kind of pushing on a little bit now with uh, Bram Tankink. Uh, look at Paulini up there for uh, Katusha. Alexander Christoph is there in this uh, front group. But, uh, oh, still, I had to check back there, Bram Tankink. Just takes his glasses off so he can actually see. Sometimes uh, the riders are uh, blinded by all the, uh, the grit and the mud on their uh, glasses, so they just have to be very careful now, but it does look as if Van Mark is on a good day. And Van Mark is the sort of rider that um, revel in these conditions. The harder it is, the better set Van Mark does. So, tanking cab and run out of gels. Wasn't uh, munching on his glasses, just didn't have a chance to put them back on. 112 and a half kilometers of uh, torture and suffering remaining for the riders in Ghent Wevel Ghent. It's enthralling stuff so far. You're looking at the chase group, which looks as if it's going to close down the gap to the front group of around about 40-odd riders at the moment, with 110 kilometers remaining in ghent Wevelgem. This is the head of the race, and this is where all the action has been for the last uh, 30 or 40 kilometers and more. We've had crashes, we've had riders desperately trying to stay upright on their bike through incredibly intense gusts of crosswind, and uh, through it all, the strongest men in North European classics racing have managed to uh, drive themselves through these conditions and onwards towards uh, an eventual rendezvous with a sprint finish in Wevelgem. Or will it be a sprint finish? Because Brian Smith alongside me is swiftly coming to the conclusion that we're not going to have a big group sprinting it out in Wevelgem this afternoon. I didn't think so under these conditions. Um, groups absolutely everywhere. Uh, there has been a couple of riders make it across to this uh, front group. Uh, Daniel Oss, the strong man from BMC, was riding in the, the, the uh, front of the second group, but he's left his team leader behind. He's made it across the junction. So Greg Van Ravermart is the, uh, in the second group we see in our picture at the moment. You can just see some riders trying to come across. Uh, Matt Heyman is one of them, the, the Aussie, just looking behind for Oric at Green Edge. But this is the main group in front. You can see the yellow jerseys of Lotto Jumbo. They have got four riders, probably the, the most they've had in some of these um, early season classics. So Seth Van Mark has got, uh, looks like Barry Marcus, Martin Tolingi, and uh, Brian Tanking to try and help him today. It's Ghent Wevelgem in Flanders Fields. It's the first time that the race has had that tagline to uh, commemorate the 100th anniversary of uh, World War I. 600,000 victims fell in Flanders Fields during the uh, Great War, 1914 to 1918. 
Just one British winner in all that time. Well, since this race started in 1934, and that was uh, Barry Hoban back in 1974. Other uh, English speaking winners, Sean Kelly, our Eurosport colleague, uh, won it in 1988. George Hincapie took victory in 2001. Arna Damar looks like he's going to get back in. Well, mind you, just as I say it, looks like the gap is going out again, having been reduced to around about 22 seconds. Now the indication is it's gone back up to 28 seconds, so it's uh, hovering at or around a half a minute and has done for, well, 10, 15 kilometers now. And eventually, either they're going to get back on or the elastic's going to snap. And if, it, if they don't get back on soon, well, things could be, uh, it could be curtains for them. But there's some strong riders in here. Grifko just going through for Astana. Um, Van Avermaet, Leukemans, Greipo. There's some strong riders in here. Vandenberg uh, for uh, Ethics. So it's difficult. It's difficult for everybody. Um, they aren't pushing hard on the front, but there is a, a, a tempo. A couple of riders have made it across. Labato at the back here for Movistar. So riders absolutely everywhere. And the sports directors in the car will not know where all the riders are. Um, so it's uh, difficult uh, for everybody. Interesting that uh, JJ Labato has made it in for the Movistar team. They've uh, divided their plans in this race between uh, Labato for the sprint and uh, looking after Nero Quintana, who's come on a fact-finding mission to Flanders. And uh, kind of relatively benign introduction to cobbled racing in Flanders on Friday in E3. The weather was uh, was excellent. He didn't last through to the finish, but he did uh, get a nice sample of the sort of conditions he can expect in uh, in the Tour de France in July. But this, an altogether different proposition. We haven't seen sight or sound of him lately. I uh, would be amazed if he's not already in a team car. This is not racing built for the uh, slight Colombian. A wonderful and a great athlete, but uh, this wasn't what he was made for. Just looking at numbers, we've got a group of uh, almost 30 riders here in front, uh, four riders from Lotto Jumbo, as I said, probably one of their uh, strongest uh, performances in the early season. It looks about three, maybe four riders from uh, Katusha as uh, well uh, for British interest. We do have uh, Scott Thwaites from Bora uh, towards the back of this uh, front group. So Jürgen Rollins come to the front, hands off the bars. <laughs> I don't think I would be doing this, but uh, back to Matt Heyman. He hadn't, had, hasn't made it across to the front group. He tried, and they never made it. I think the only person that made it across to the front group was, in fact, uh, Daniel Oss. You can just see this is the uh, second group on the road, including Greipo, Van Avermaet, Grifko. In interesting decision, Brian, of Daniel Oss to forge on alone, make it through to the front group. Uh, obviously, uh, didn't feel that Greg Van Avermaet was up to it today. No, but they've got Michael Shah in front, uh, trying to uh, keep the tempo up. Uh, Arnold Demar second last year, also in this uh, second group. Very difficult, but maybe with the uh, depleted numbers in front, uh, I think Jempi Drucker is there, uh, only having one rider in front, he's probably given a nod, try and get across and, and try and put some numbers, because very few teams have got numbers in the front of this race. Yeah, and in fairness to Greg Van Avermaet, he was... Uh, he was hobbled his way to sign on this morning. He was injured. Well, he's riding at the front here. I, th I think he's uh, resigned to try and help. Um, he's not going to sit back. He's uh, riding and, you know, he's maybe thinking of the uh, the bigger picture of next week in the uh, Ron Van Blanderen. Yeah, he crashed in E3 on Friday. Hobbled, as I say, to sign on, but uh, they make them off. Pretty stern stuff in Belgium, and Van Avermaet's getting the miles in ahead of battles to come. They might make it in, but at this point, they need to make further inroads into the group ahead, and at the moment, the uh, signs aren't good. The GPS indicating that they've lost another three or four seconds. Heyman, big, strong Aussie that he is, veteran rider, knows these uh, roads, knows this scene, but hasn't quite been able to get in, into contention. So just caught out in that uh, echelon section a little while ago. Spent a lot of time in the breakaway on one of the days in Terreno Adriatico, so he's got good form. He's got uh, plenty of racing in his legs at this point, but uh, Heyman just not quite able to make it across. Gerald Zierek having a little, uh, having a little bite, rolling to the front for MTN Quebec. I'm uh, not sure what the uh, indication there was. 
Yeah, they wanted to keep riding. I think it's uh, Barry Marcus uh, from uh, Lotto Yumbo. Just wanted everybody to keep riding, but there's a lot of uh, passengers in this front group. As everybody knows, there's uh, only one rider from uh, Sky, Geraint Thomas. He's on form. Uh, Peter Sagan, also in this uh, front group. Can't see any other teammates for him. So there are teams with numbers. They did start riding in the front. There's still over 100 kilometres to go. But nobody really wants to um, push this far out. And that's why we're getting a little disarray in this uh, front group now. So Eric's quick stepper clearly riding on. Nicholas Mass rolls through to the front, finds that he gets a gap quite quickly. So not exactly total cohesion in this group. And that is uh, the gap between the front and the second group, foreshortened by the camera. Last indication we got was it had come down a few seconds to uh, to pretty much exactly half a minute. And they've been scrapping away at this gap for, what, 20-odd kilometres at this point? And it's, it's frenetic stuff. It's a match race between group, two groups of, uh, what, 25 or more. The thing is, Declan is forcing a lot of riders to ride, to race at this point. Normally, they'd be sitting in the group just uh, waiting for the finale. But uh, these conditions have forced a lot of the riders to commit themselves, put their nose in the wind. And uh, as everybody knows, that's uh, sapping a lot of their energy. So it's going to be a hard man's race today. It does look as if we've got a group of about uh, 30 riders, then a small group of almost 20. So we could be, in fact, only with 100 kilometres to go, have uh, 50 riders left within contention. Yeah, still with some of the biggest tests still to come. Remember, they've got to go up to Kem Kemmelberg twice. They've also got a sense of the uh, Banneberg, Monteberg twice, Banneberg twice indeed. Monteberg is the final climb of nine, comes with 34 kilometres remaining, the summit of that one kilometre hill. That will be the conclusion of the Hellingen for Ghent Welvo 2015, after which they'll have that 34 kilometre ride as uh, John Tegenkov rolls through to the front, replaced by Luca Paolini, always knows where to be. An Italian rider who really knows how to find his way around Flanders. So Taken called Beck, clearly happy to roll towards the front. Haven't seen too much of uh, Alexander Kristoff lately. Presumably he is there. Yeah, he's just the hiding in the back. Uh, we've got uh, a lone attacker now, Martin Talinga, the strong man and one of the eldest uh, men in the race, uh, going off the front for uh, Lotto Yumbo. So the uh, pressure at the front of the race has just gone out of it. Nobody wants to ride, and so it's allowed this uh, group of almost 20 riders to uh, come back. So we do have about 50 riders left in the race, but this is a time with um, still over 100 kilometers to go that uh, Lotto Yumbo, having four riders in front, have decided that uh, it's time for Martin Talinga to keep the pressure on. Superb work by Greg Van Avermaet. He did a big, big uh, turn of work there to connect up these two groups. Martin Chilingi finds himself clear Dan of the field. Daniel Walsh now reacts to it, so BMC <clears throat> trying to... And this is the rider that showed some really good form, was back with uh, Greg Van Avermaet, and uh, he came across that, uh, that gap pretty much on his own. Uh, so he's obviously on a, a very good day, doesn't mind these conditions, and uh, just saved a wee bit of his energy and is uh, going after Martin Tillingi. But he looks back and uh, it takes quick step with Nicholas Mass at the front of the main group and he decides, no, it's still a long way to go. It's, it's all about managing your energy. And I think uh, you get the sense with Daniel Oss that he really has found a rich seam of form because he was well to the fore in A3 on Friday and the previous Sunday in Milan San Remo, one of the big animators of things uh, with the, on the uh, second last hill. And you think that with uh, Daniel Oss that there's every chance that he could fight for his own success, not quite the sprinter that he might need to be in races like uh, Milan San Remo. And indeed, perhaps this race, if we do end up with a group going to the finish line, that uh, is the reason that he ends up in the service of others. But uh, Daniel Oss, certainly superb athlete on absolutely flying form at the moment. So now, Chilingi finds himself clear of the field, 100 kilometers remaining. All set with a big group at the front now. Just under 100 kilometers to go in Ghent Wevelgem 2015, and so much has happened already in this race. It's just been one big long bun fight since the get go. They have 140 odd kilometers in their legs at this moment, and where well, we have a lead group all together. 
momentary cessation of hostilities as riders deal with clothing and try and get some food in after the wind and rain has buffeted them into echelon after echelon. Several crashes, several riders out already, and now we have a front group of around about 50 riders. The second group now on the road, which was uh, at one point the third group on the road, now at 40 seconds behind. And I think every chance of getting back in here because the teams are now having a little bit of a reset, a rethink. The junction has been made between the front uh, group of around about 30 riders and that chasing group of 20 within the last few minutes, as a result of which teams are reviewing just uh, how much in the way of troops they've got up front. I can tell you there is uh, a lone attack, and that is Martin Chilingi of uh, Team Lotto Yumbo. Interesting decision by him to head clear. He's on the Katzberg. was introduced into this race uh, a few years ago. This race, once upon a time, was a Wednesday race for so many years, and uh, in 2010, they moved it to Sunday since when so I think it's become more important on the calendar, and it really, uh, at one point, it was considered a minor classic. I think these days, Ghent Webelgem is has been elevated in status. It really is a very, very important addition to any rider's Palmares, should he be lucky enough to get uh, his hands in the air on the run across the finish line in Wevelgem. Well, a lot of these uh, Flanders classics were uh, kind of individual races, so they've decided to uh, combine their efforts together. They've got the Flanders classics, and, uh, you know, they're trying to, uh, you know, elevate the importance, but just look at the bushes behind blowing, still blowing these riders with a decimation in the peloton. This is a bit of a lull in the action. The one rider in front, it's allowed a lot of riders to come back to this uh, front group, in including uh, Nessa Bahani. Um, we had we seen uh, Heinrich Hauser uh, puncture, and uh, again, a lot of these teams have been uh, punctures at the wrong times in races, and for Heinrich Hauser, it was re the wrong time to puncture, but fortunately, there's some groups that managed to come back, and he managed to get into it, because uh, having a puncture at the wrong time in a race like this, your race could pretty much be over. Yeah, the... Equipment that riders are using in the Flanders Classic really quite significantly different to the sort of equipment they're going to be using in a, a three-week Grand Tour, particularly in France in July. Different uh, wheels, not too many riders on deep section wheels today. Most riders on tubular tires and maybe just a little bit uh, thicker and more chunky. Jens de Buscara makes it back in. He's a rider Lotto Sudal will be hoping can be to the fore at the conclusion of today's activities. Well, got himself back on. He has uh, a little while to try and gather his resources ahead of the hills to come. But, yeah, different uh, different wheel and tyre configurations altogether, really, at this uh, point in the year. It depends uh, also on your team, because uh, every team, team is sponsored by uh, different uh, manufacturers, um, some better than others, unfortunately. But uh, that's what happens. Uh, not everybody, not all the best tyres can be uh, used by all the uh, top teams in the world. And, Again, it's a different setup um, for a lot of the uh, the classics riders. Most of them use about uh, 26 millimeters in the the race, and probably today about six, maybe six and a half bar. For the likes of um, Paris Roubaix, which is coming up in a couple of weeks' time, they will use uh, 28 millimeter tires, pretty much the whole field, um, and they'll probably ride maybe four to four and a half bar in their uh, their tires. So uh, some teams are deciding to go. And at a day like to this, probably under uh, six bar because it's uh, wet also. So, but again, probably the best tops for uh, the classics. And I know the Team Sky, I think, are riding on Veloflex or uh, FMB, which is kind of specialist for these type of uh, cobble classics because it's when you had the cobbles and you want the cushioning, and there is a lot of test. And I believe um, some of the, the teams are testing, in fact, a 30 millimeter tire. Yeah, they, definitely the Vogue is for wider tires in recent years. Mainly, it was thought of as being a tyre that was more robust, I think, for, for these kind of conditions. But now, latterly, the thinking is that uh, the wider tyres roll better and the wheel manufacturers are making rims that are compatible with those wider tyres. So that's uh, very much the way to go. Can make it a bit tricky if you get a, a narrow section rim from neutral service. Your, uh, your brakes are lined up for uh, 25 mil rims. And some of the tyres uh, are, in fact, clinchers from a neutral service as well. So it's, uh, it doesn't help. And uh, there's a lot of time and effort goes into uh, many uh, sponsors of, of these teams. And it just needs one puncture at the wrong time. And 
you know, your race could be over if you're a really important rider. So luckily for uh, Nicky Tepstra and Heinrich Hauser, they have made it back because because there's been a lull in the action because their race could have been over just having untimely punctures. Terpster's back in. No sign of Mark Cavendish having made it up there. John Degenkolb is uh, certainly there. So too is Peter Sagan. Jens de Buscara has recently just managed to make his way back into the fold. Top sprinter with uh, Lotto Sudal. Andre Greipel is in the front group. So plenty of riders with a fast finishing kick have managed to get in. There's plenty of riders too who wouldn't have a finishing kick have decided to, uh, or have managed to make it into the group. Chilingi is one of those that has decided to forge on on his own with 94 kilometers still remaining. It's a big, big ask. He just has uh, three quarters of a minute. Well, he's warming up. He's uh, just unzipped his talk and. I don't know if it was a, a rush of blood, but uh, this is one of the most experienced riders in the uh, peloton, Martin Tillinga, and one of the strongest at that. And by having uh, four riders in that front group, maybe he decided it was time to, to push on, but he's not really pushing on hard. Uh, still uh, 43 seconds he's got. Still, you know, under 94 kilometres go to the finish. It's going to be a very, very difficult day for him if he's any thoughts of uh, taking this all, all the way to the finish. So Chilingi, three quarters of a minute as he toils in the wind and rain. And you can see how tough things are out there. He hasn't managed to get his jacket off. He's got to keep his hands on the bars as he makes this little left-hander. he go right again very shortly. And he's uh, well served with bottles and gels. Obviously, he just recently taken that one off. So Chilingi has managed to just about get his Chile off as he mounts another climb. 93 kilometers remaining. Things are heating up again in Gent-Wethelgem as the lead group of 50 riders stretches thin on these uh, narrow, wet and very demanding Flanders roads. Lone leader, Martin Chilingi of Lotto Jumbo is out front with a 48 second advantage as uh, the remaining riders still in contention. One or two have managed to get back on in recent moments. Uh, Sepp van Mart, Mark, uh, Martin Chilingi's teammate and one of the pre-race favorites has uh, changed his bike and he's safely back in the peloton. Chilingi out front, 37 years of age now, originally from Arnhem in the Netherlands. Uh, one Tour of Belgium back in 2006, third in Paris-Roubaix back in 2011. If you needed uh, any further indication of his uh, his ability and his quality on these kind of roads that's all you need to hear string of strong results over the years but uh, mainly in the service of others has stretched his advantage now just uh, well heading towards a minute but is it a folly what is the point of this attack it's giving Sepp van Mark a free ride up front but you sense that uh, Lee group is preparing itself for battles to come all the riders uh, not quite at this point where they're fighting for position. We have, uh, at this point in the proceedings, completed three of the nine hills. The next one up is the Bannerberg. A very short, sharp shock. 20% at its maximum, 10% average. It's just a few hundred meters, and that comes uh, with 87 kilometers remaining. So very shortly, Chilingi will be the first of the riders left in ghent again. Haven't seen any sign of Mark Cavendish in contention. We did see him caught in one of the groups behind. He was off his bike, had to get a front wheel puncture at just about the worst possible moment when the action was at its most frenetic in the uh, crosswind section. When the groups uh, were in echelons all over the road. Uh, Mark Cavendish, we don't, uh, well, we don't know whether he's still out there racing, but he's certainly not as far as we can make out in that lead group up front. Still some of the top sprinters including the reigning champion Peter Sagan and the victor of Milan San Remo just over a week ago, John Degenkopp safely in the group and several others besides who would have ambitions to get past them in the finishing sprint, if indeed it comes to a finishing sprint because with their two ascents of the Kemmelberg to come and several other climbs be uh, besides that, you can be sure there's every uh, chance that uh, a lone leader will be able to forge clear or perhaps uh, a very small group of... Uh, the lesser sprinters, the big strong men who don't have the big finishing kick, might be able to distance themselves from the sprinters. So there's uh, plenty of 
opportunity for great racing to come. But uh, Chilingi has decided to put it down to them, thrown the gauntlet down. And then very shortly, we'll have that advantage up over a minute, but he's going to need an awful lot more than that with uh, still 89 kilometers remaining if he's to stay clear to the line. He is, for what it's worth, giving his team leader a free ride, but, uh, well, his free ride is... Uh, Team leader still has to fight his way into position when they come to the Bergs. Yeah, he's given his uh, Seva Mark a free ride, and he, he's the other teammates that are in here. I think it's Barry Marcus and. Uh, oh, you know, crash, crash, crash on the right hand, hand side. side, so it looks as if. Uh, Paolini. Yeah, Luca Paolini always seems to be in the right position, rarely on the floor. Luca Paolini looking with disgust, and I think he's obviously got to get service because he uh, wasn't able to jump straight back up on his bike. But just going back to uh, the local young Yombo's uh, tactics there, um, it's nice to have four riders in front. Uh, they were starting to ride, no one else wanted to ride with them, so instead of riding in the front, they put one rider uh, down the road, and it means that the, the other teammates can just you know sit and follow, but still a long way to go, and Talinga is a strong rider, and he's going to be using up a lot of energy on his own, so they will be depleted in numbers. Um, when the racing starts. So it's a big call you make. You have to, the sports directors have to make a big calls whether to save the whole strength of the team. There was four of them there. Uh, every team started today with eight, so they were in a very good position. So why the, whether they save that strength or put some of that strength down the road and entice others to, uh, to, um, to have to chase. But I think uh, everybody's happy that one rider is just down the road at uh, one minute. There's still a long way to go towards the finish. And, Various teams have got uh, interest in uh, just, you know, keeping tabs at the front of this first front group and uh, maintaining this uh, speed. But a lot of the riders will be happy now uh, that uh, the group, the main group in, in this race is only about uh, almost 60 strong now. Uh, so there won't be the big fight. But normally when we come up to the um, Kimmelberg, there's a big fight for a uh, position and the race splits to pieces. Well, we've already seen the, uh, the race split to pieces. We've had uh, seven riders on the attack earlier on, they, they almost had uh, about eight and a half minutes because of the uh, the cross winds and that brutal uh, side wind where the riders were getting buffeted. Uh, the race just went split into smithereens and it's now regrouped. So it's settled down ever so slightly, but still a long way to go towards the finish. Dan Worry uh, on Twitter, at DQ Sport for myself, at Bryce Smithy. Uh, Brian alongside hashtag home cycling. He says, don't know if he'll win again, well, again but uh, Mark Chilingi will get you a boatload of points in Scrabble. He certainly would that. I wonder what the definition of a Chilingi is. Is he a lone attacker? Futile lone attacker? Well, he's put it down. He's put it out there, and he's animated this race, giving us entertainment. Group relatively content to watch him at the moment. Yeah, Jens Kukler for... Uh... Orica Green Edge deciding to uh, keep the pressure on. Again, it's uh, a lot of these teams have been uh, depleted at the front of this race. So, uh, unfortunately for some teams, I can actually only see one rider from AG2R, is Luca Paolini, comes back to the uh, front of this race. So, in the brown shots there, only one rider from AG2R. This is if uh, I am, I've got two riders, Sh uh, Charbonnel and Heinrich Hauser, who's uh, already punctured. From said to you, looks as if they've only got one rider there, and that's their team leader, and that's uh, Demar. So Demar second last year. So a lot of these teams are uh, finding they do not have the numbers at the front of this race. This is the Bannerberg, just 300 metres, as I said. A little ramp of 20%, uh, averages 10%, so it's, uh, it's a little stinger. Not particularly long, but it's another short, sharp shock, and it'll be burning matches for lots of the riders. Manuel Quinziato is now on the attack. He's been closed down by Etty's quick step. Still towards the front, Geraint Thomas, the winner from P3, Harold Becker. Geraint Thomas looks very, very comfortable indeed. Every time the road goes up or the, uh, the wind starts to blow in a less than advantageous direction, while well, Thomas just rolls to the front. You suspect that he can't feel the pedals in relation to the others. And it's uh, Gregory Ross there for a uh, Trek Factory Racing. They lost their team leader, Fabian Cancellara, in A3 Harold Becker on Friday. Yeah, disappointment for Fabian Cancellara. Cracked vertebrae mean he's out of the classics for this year. Wish him well in his recovery. So Chilingi's been over the Vandenberg. The group behind thins out 
as they race their way onto the lower slopes of this climb. And a big crowd making their presence felt, cheering on these tough men. What's uh, typical classics weather. Not particularly cold, you would say, but the, uh, the wind, well, that'll seep into their bones. The rain, too. Next climb up after this one is the Kemmelberg. Comes in about, uh, around about 10 kilometers time. First ascent of the Kemmelberg, first of two ascents. And uh, one of the AG Tour La Mondiale riders, clearly feeling the pinch. Riders feeling it earlier than they might have done had it not been such an unbelievably difficult start to this race because the wind really has taken its toll. Not plenty of out there going for uh, Geraint for the win. If you would bet against him, not a sprinter, so he's going to have to find a way clear or get himself clear in a group that doesn't incl include any of the big sprinters. That means isolating the sprinters, so I think they, uh, they need to get busy to try and thin this group out a little earlier and then uh, try and get away from the sprinters later on. So it's uh, still a lot of work to be done if the non-sprinters are to have their day. It does occasionally happen in Wevelgem. 85 kilometers remaining, one minute advantage for Martin Chilingi up front. Well, the wind is back in Ghent Wevelgem as they descend off the fourth hill of the day. They find themselves into a little bit of a crosswind section. Martin Chilingi is the lone leader with that uh, advantage of just over, or just under a minute. Here's the second place man on the road, Jens Kukeler of Orica Greenedge. Three riders coming across, and it looks as if we've got a little bit of action once more as uh, riders find themselves all over the road. Nasser Bohani, who had a long, long chase to get back into contention, found himself distanced on that uh, on that most recent climb and found him, finds himself isolated as well and doesn't seem to know what to do and when riders are starting to look behind them when there's a gap to be closed in front that's never a good sign so Nasser Pohani sixth in Milan San Remo looks as if uh, Flanders could be just a bridge too far for him meanwhile uh, riders putting it up to is this uh, Vandenberg or one of the Etix quick step riders just jogging over to this small group, and that would make it an interesting selection of teams up front. Daniel Oss for BMC has a little look over his shoulder to see uh, what sort of damage he's done. Lots of damage would be the answer. And now some decisions need to be made because there are several teams in here, Brian. And this is clearly the first, uh, the first big salvo from the big teams. Well, just goes to show you that uh, you can't afford to relax. Uh, just when there was a lull in the action, everybody was taking on bottles, just relaxing, and then all of a sudden you come onto a road like this. Jürgen Rollins is there, Daniel Wass, Kukulea, Vandenberg. Just don't know the identity of the top spot, Vlanderen, right there, there, but uh, good to see them in there after their one two in Vlador Vlanderen in a week. So five riders are chasing down one rider in front, Martin Tilingi, one Sky rider trying to come across the uh, group, but. Uh, this is a savage, savage day today. Well, Sky, I've not too many representatives in that group behind. And it's, uh, Looks as if he's caught, I think it was uh, Christian Kines. Kines was there with... Uh, but uh, with two Geraint riders Thompson. coming over. It's this uh, Sagan, it's up there, because uh, Tinkoff only had Sagan and Matty Fresho there, so it's either one of them. And he's got one rider for company. So seven riders, it is uh, Sagan. Coming across with, it uh, looks like maybe one of the riders from uh, Cofidis, but it's uh, this man here that's on his own. The gap will be coming down now. Now we arrive into the town of Kemmel, and we're on the lower slopes of the Kemmelberg, the fabled Kemmelberg. This is the traditional battleground in ghent Wevelgem. It's been such an important uh, part of the fabric of this race, the tradition of... Uh, Again, Ravel game all about who's strong on the Kemmelberg. Again, the race is on. <coughs> Jürgen Rollins at the front for Lotto. 
Kukulele is there for Orica. Looks like the top spot Blanda and Ryder is uh, Toynes. Who's second in uh, Eduardo Blander and Van der for Etics. Os for BMC in the uh, reds, just at the back, just trying to see the Katusha Ryder Satovic, it looks like. Set Van Mark comes across the gap. So Jens Kukulele in the the head of affairs there is the man that kicked this off. And on the wheel of uh, Van Mark was uh, the Paris Roubaix champion from last year. Nicky Terstra comes straight to the front. But uh, Sagan have been very attentive. So Sagan has made it across that gap, but it looks as if the group behind has been towed up by Luca Paolini. Paolini, after his puncture, safely back into the group, has made his way to the front and is doing a job of work to uh, tow it back for presumably Alexander Kristoff. As I said, we haven't seen too much of him lately, but he was in there early on when this group first, uh, first established itself. So Luca Paolini doing a good job and looks as if the riders that made the big effort to close that gap might have just uh, wasted a little bit of energy. Geraint Thomas rolls uh, in front of his teammate Christian Canace. Those are the only two Sky representatives. Questions on Twitter. Uh, part man, part bike is asking, is Wigan still in? Kent Wevelgem? Well, I don't know, but I'm fairly sure he's not in this front group. And Peter Sagan is losing troops from the fray. And that's, that's what's so great about uh, this classics racing is you very often end up with such few teammates that it becomes uh, a real war of attrition between the riders. Now we've hit the Camelberg, 6.2%, 19%. Those the stats, the vital statistics of a real leg breaker of a climb. And the bad news for Martin Chilingi and the rest is they've got to do it all over again in a little while. His advantage up over a minute not so long ago, now less than half a minute. Yeah, it's coming down very quickly now, 24 seconds, the first time of the um, Camel Bird. You'll hit this again after another 40 kilometres. And then from there, there'll be um, just under 40 kilometres to go towards the finishing line, but it's uh, Etix leading the way with Van der Berg and Stebart. Van Mark on the right-hand side in yellow for Lotto Jumbo. Still getting Thomas right up there towards the front. Matteo Trentin, also up there for Ethics, who won the sprint in E3 for third place. So now one camera can contain all the riders in front. Jalingi will very shortly be mopped up, thanks to Bella Voices for uh, letting us know that Wiggins abandoned uh, over an hour ago, about an hour ago. Bill Lobato has made his way up towards the front of this race, so it's swings and roundabouts. Greg Van Arbermant also up towards the front. So just when you thought the race was over for so many of these riders, they're starting to get their breath back and we're starting to see it, some changes towards the front of this race. Christoph was through there. Yeah, that was Porcelf for Katusha that was struggling and getting tailed off. It's not an important, an important uh, lieutenant for Alexander Christoph is being jettisoned from the fray. I think he's going to hold on to his lead across the top of the first assault on the Kemmelberg. They're spread wide across the road. Still early days in relative terms with 78 kilometres remaining. And the leading runners across the front, they're going to be led up, I was going to say, by uh, Stan Vandenberg, the imposing figure. Cheers on Twitter for him. I'd like to see him win if it can't be Geraint Thomas, says uh, Rick Palmer. Well, he's very much uh, a workhorse, is Stein Vandenberg. Knows his role, and he, I think he'll be putting all his eggs into the uh, Zdenek Stebar basket at the moment. I was just looking there. Um, Sagan was there, but it uh, did look as if the strong men from uh, Etix Quickstep were towards the four. OK, they've lost uh, Mark Cavendish. He's uh, been on the, on the grounds and also a puncture. So he never made it to this front group, but it does look as if uh, Etix Quickstep does have strength in numbers in this uh, front group. You can see four of them towards the front. Trenton just going through there. Stebar is there, Van der Berg. And also um, Nicky Tepstra. Nicholas Mass might have been there as well. So they have plenty of reinforcements should they be necessary. They certainly will be necessary. 
Won't be a group this big when they reach Kemmelberg next time round, you can be sure of that. That will be with 38 kilometers remaining. It'll be the penultimate uh, berg on this year's parkour. That'll be coming four kilometers before the final one, which is the Monteberg. So there's a great atmosphere at the finish line. Great atmosphere too on the Kemmelberg. Big crowd out. We'll now repair to the uh, television to try and see what's happening before they dive out from under the covers once more. To see the riders in about another 30 kilometers or so to go. Still Chilingi out front. behind the uh, front group splits up a little on the descent. This is not quite as difficult a descent as it once was. They, uh, they used to go straight down the cobbles. For years, it caused all sorts of carnage. Now they take an altogether shallower descent. Oh, somebody in the ditch here. And we on have the right uh, is Cook Lair, perhaps on the right-hand side. It's certainly a representative of uh, Arica Greenedge. Not the first time we've uh, seen an Arica Greenedge rider in the ditch so far this afternoon. I'm not sure that is uh, Cook Lair. Yeah, we had a terrible uh, crash in the descent off the Camelback before. I think it was uh, Jimmy Casper, if I remember right, uh, had a reel landed in his face and uh, broke a few teeth. But Talingi is just about to be joined by Jürgen Rollins of uh, Lotto Belisau. Oh, sorry, Lotto Sudal. As you see, the protesters are out yet again. Every Flanders Classic, they're out protesting. Great collection of tractors, that, though, isn't it? And they could... Uh, could need those uh, <laughs> those tractors later on today. Tow a few cars out. There's a big old crowd around here at the moment. 76 and a half kilometres. That group behind is not as big as it was. That's for sure. Jurgen Rollins knits up with uh, Marta Chilingi up front. Rollins pushing on for Lotto Sudal. Looks like it is a good move for um, Jurgen Rollins now. Obviously feeling good today. Greipel's kind of hanging on to the back of this group. So obviously. Um, starting to be distanced with this group whittled down the first time up the Kemmelberg. Still got another ascent of the Kemmelberg to come. Well, Mark Jeremy on Twitter, uh, hashtag home of cycling, can't repeat it often enough, uh, says Seb Van Mark will surely try and break it up. Who has the strength to follow? Who are the riders that are going to try and cut things up? Uh, Geraint Thomas, I suppose, is the other obvious uh, well, the rider. Form riders, the form riders, you think Geraint Thomas looks very good. Uh, he's only got Christian Canese with him. Uh, you've got Seth Van Mark and they're playing, a, they're playing a good game today. This is probably the strongest performance they've had this year. They had four riders in the front group. Uh, they've sent Talingi down the road. Seth Van Mark has just has to follow. Um, and then you've got uh, Etix Quickstep and it looks as if they are doing the chasing at front of the, uh, the group behind. And uh, they have got various numbers. There. If it comes to sprint, they've got uh, Trenton, who showed well in E3 Harobeka by winning the bunch sprint, beating Astley Christoph. And uh, they've got... Um, Plenty of options. Steba, second in uh, E3 after being in a breakaway with uh, Geraint Thomas and uh, Nicky Tapstra. Looks as if he's on some uh, good form today, but a very depleted group in front. Only about uh, 30 riders with uh, Tillinge and Rollins just uh, up front by about 10 seconds. So now Etix Quickstep have to take command of the peloton. Two strong teams uh, with representatives behind have taken control of the race. No responsibility for chasing for the man sitting in third place. That's uh, Sepp van Mark. We're expecting plenty of activity from him. The man on the front of the group here is the, well, one of the biggest men in world cycling, Stan Vandenberg. I'm not exactly sure how tall he is, about six foot four, six foot five. He's uh, absolutely enormous. Former winner of Tour of Ireland many years ago and since then has slotted into a role as one of the leading strongmen. 199. That's a lot of centimetres. Do a quick conversion there. Was, uh, 75 and a half kilometres behind. One advantage for Stein Vandenberg when he looks behind. It's no difficulty seeing over the group. Well, Sielek uh, is still well to the fore there, isn't he? I think I spotted him at fifth or sixth in line. Winner of Milan San Remo a couple of years ago. Chilingi's a busted flush, isn't he? He's gone. Jurgen Rollins, fresher legs. He forges on. They played the card and uh, Chilingi paying for it now, so that was a big effort uh, just on this uh, small climb there, the, uh, the Malmsberg. So 
Again, a very small group behind, but uh, Jürgen Rollins obviously is loving these conditions on a very good day today. They don't have the numbers in this front group either. It did look as if a Greipo, I don't know if he's made it into this group behind, but it did look as if he was uh, starting to um, hang on the back. But it's a very small group now. First of two ascents of the Monteberg. Tell you what, Van Avermaet, been on the floor, that was a hard crash. He'd been down hard, straight over the handlebars in E3, Harrowbecker. He was in the third group, back over his way back, so nice to see him in this, this uh, front group. Yeah, superb effort. Our Greg Van Avermaet took a stage victory in Terreno Adriatico just over a week ago. To Arezzo, if memory serves. Up the hill there, showing his strength. Just trying to see if there's any other Lotto um, Sudal riders in this uh, group here. I can't see any at this moment. So, again, who's going to chase? Van Asbrook coming up with it looks like Barry Marcus. So, Van Asbrook coming back for Astana. There's another man. Perhaps uh, has a chance if he can get back into contention. Not really sure why he was behind. Was he it's distanced? Greipel right at the back there, just hiding in the black cape there. So, the uh, the German champion is, and again, Lotto Sudal playing the cards. Greifel just can hang on at the back of this group, but uh, Jürgen Rollins looks as if he's on a very good day today. And he'll make a point to collect that later on. Jürgen Rollins looking strong at the moment, still a long way to go. Van Asbrook uh, makes it back into contention for Astana, not sure why he was off the back. Was it uh, lack of legs or was it some other some other issue? Arna Damar is visible now. We're starting to see national champions colours there coming out as the jackets are coming off. So Arna Damar, the French national champions, the tricolour colour is on the left, manages to pick up a Francis de Jeu bottle and gel. So five riders now for Etix Quickstep. Nicholas Mace at the front, Vandenberg. Steve Barn, his national champs kit. Nicky Terpstra and Matteo Trentin. So five riders in this group of... Uh, about uh, 25 riders, so strength in numbers for Ethics, and the real pressure is on them. They haven't really des uh, delivered in the uh, classics yet. Steve Ars national champion's colours in evidence, and so too uh, Peter Sagan, Slovakian national champion. Some people may disagree, second and third in Harobeka was good, but as far as this Belgian team, they are only they only count the, the wins. Well, afterwards. Steve Barr said, well, I have to accept what it was. It, I had great legs, it was a great, it is a great result. And he just hesitated that fraction of a second when uh, Geraint Thomas got away and that's it, he accepted from there on. So he was relatively sanguine about it. It wasn't too, uh, didn't sound too downcast or downbeat. But Park Lefebvre, he just wants to win. He wants to win these races and second, third's not good enough for him. So he, he sets uh, a very high standard for these boys and uh, they're all under pressure. You can see the Steve when he came across the line, he had his head down, but nothing he can do. But they've got a great opportunity today. Uh, five riders in this uh, front group. Still a lot of strong men sitting behind them. Kalingi just kind of hanging on here, but uh, Jürgen Rollins is looking strong now. So how long can he hang out the front? Steve Vandenberg is six foot six. 199 centimeters uh, translates into uh, six foot six inches. Thanks to Pro Sky Fan for that one. Nope, uh, they're all coming. Mark Vallis, everybody's been on the internet. Dan Young wants to know, why are the farmers protesting? I have absolutely no idea. No doubt if uh, you pick up Ed Neusblad uh, tomorrow, you might find out. So Chilingi will be back in the fray very shortly. 32 seconds the advantage though for uh, Jürgen Rollins out front. Looks like the front group are starting to get a little bit busier. So that 32 second advantage for uh, Jürgen Rollins. Will he hang on? We'll find out again after this break. Seventy kilometers remaining in the race they call the Sprinters Classic. Well, I can tell you, you've only got about ten or twelve riders up front at the moment, and one rider uh, out clear. That's Jurgen Rollins. On the front, we've got uh, Stein Vandenberg looking behind and trying to figure things out. He's taken his radio out, and he won't realize—perhaps he's starting to realize—that his teammate 
and team leader, this man, Zdenek Stibar, has punctured. He's got service from his teammate, Nicholas Maas, and he's back in the cars and making his way back up towards that front group. But Vandenberg was riding on the front there for a little while. But, uh, he's throttled back now. This will enable uh, Stibar to get back into contention. It's an important time, I think, for Stibar to take on a bottle. He might need another one again as the uh, BMCs just try to turn the screw a little bit and make it uh, tough for these riders behind to get back in and indeed for Stebar to get back into contention. Meanwhile, Rollins continuing to do his own thing up front with that advantage of around about 40 seconds. So it's uh, split up again. We've got a longish run to the next hill, which will be the, uh, the Bannerberg. The second ascent of the Bannerberg comes uh, with 46 kilometers remaining. They're waiting for um, Stebar. Again, you can just see uh, Vandenberg with his uh, radio out, so he'll not hear the calls from the team. So, Steve, um, again, there's no, there's no perfect time to place. Probably the uh, perfect time to puncture. The only time is probably perfect to puncture is when the uh, the bunch is uh, just riding along. But uh, they have been riding along at all today because of these uh, winds. So it's uh, been a difficult chase for Steve. He has had the help of his team with the uh, magic spanner and uh, you know a bottle coming out but he's behind the uh, the jury car the referee or commissaire and he'll soon be back but uh, van der Berg doesn't know anything at the he's moment he's confused isn't he he knows Rollins is up front and he feels a stall behind he's not exactly sure why and uh, Garen Thomas and is this Daniel Oss of BMC in red have decided that this might be a nice opportunity to jump clear make the junction with van der Berg if van der Berg is willing to ride well but this was a situation we talked about earlier on that um, there was no cohesion in the classics uh, team with um, Etics Quick Step. They want to ride their own race. They, they lost with three riders in uh, Omloop Head, Head Noiseblatt. And you can see now Vandenberg with his uh, race radio out. He doesn't want to hear what's happening behind. He doesn't really care. He wants to ride for himself today. And uh, yeah, just taking that uh, radio out. I think he talked to Nicky Terpstra. Uh, he explained what was happening, and still, he just went on the attack. He's not really cared about uh, his uh, team leader, Steve Barr, puncturing and trying to make it back. So Jens de Buskere is trying to make his way across the Belgian national road race champion. And oh, uh, just making the junction is one of the... Oh, the, the, the radio's going back in, so it could be... Uh, massive revelation here for Stein Vandenberg. I suspect we're not going to see him on the front of this little group for again for a little while. He puts his earpiece in and he'll probably say now I've been told not to work. Gerring Thomas is there. Van Mark struggling a wee bit uh, but the strong man of today has been uh, Daniel Oss coming from the second group to the first group and uh, willing to go on the attack and he has looked good so we've got Daniel Oss, Gerring Thomas, Stein van der Berg, Seth Van Mark and just coming across as the uh, Belgian champion de Boucherou. Wow, that's a very strong group up front. So what are they going to do now? What's uh, Stan van den Berg going to do? Well, he's going to say, I've got my radio in now and I've been told not to write. An opportune moment to put it back in his ear, you'd have to say. Five riders chasing a lone rider up front and being chased in turn by a group of, uh, what, not much more than 20 riders behind, if even that. The klaxons roar as they greet the riders in Ghent Wevelgem. Still a long way from the finish and a lot of racing to be done. And this is just being whittled down into uh, tiny groups on the road. I wonder how many people are actually going to finish uh, Ghent Wevelgem. I wonder what the record uh, small number of finishes, if that be a term. It's the smallest number of recorded finishers in Ghent Wevelgem. Usually it's a group of uh, about 40 or 50. It's far from unheard of for smaller groups to make it to the line, even solo winners. More often than not, it is a sprint. The Sprinter's Classic, they call it. Not today, it isn't. Uh, unless you've got a sprint that lasts for 239 kilometers. 65.8 uh, kilometers remaining now, and still lots and lots of racing to be done. Vandenberg, to remind you, four, uh, comes with 30, sorry, 46 kilometers remaining, then the Kemmelberg at 38, then the Monteberg at 40, at 34 kilometers. Geraint Thomas, he's just itching to get out front, isn't he? Everything that goes off the front, he just wants to try and jump over to it. He wants to race, but such a long way to go to the finish. And sometimes the rider that is the strongest doesn't win because he's so strong and doesn't know exactly how to use the, how to use the energy. This, our lone leader up front. Rollins toiling in the wind. And you get a real sense of uh, just how difficult it is. That's an absolutely beautiful shot, isn't it, as it 
sweeps across the landscape. Look at the uh, the way the road has been battered by the wind. Branches shaken from those trees lining that long avenue. All the uh, dirt from the ditches out strewn into the uh, middle of the road. And Rollins once again leaning into the wind coming from uh, from his right, our left of screen. And he cants the bike over. It's almost like yachting. He's practically tacking his way up this road, isn't he? 42 seconds is the advantage over five riders. I'm sure he must be thinking now, with those five riders clear of the group behind, perhaps it might be worth his while just uh, throttling back for a little while, wait for these guys, and then he can contribute to that effort. I think he'll keep going now because uh, De Bichere, the Belgian champion, is his teammate and he's getting a free ride. He's got four strong riders in front of him, so it's a good tactical move from uh, Lotto Soudal. They had um, three riders in that group behind, the Belgian champion being one of them, Roland's, and uh, they've also got uh, Andrew Greipo in the group behind, so they're in a good way. This is a very important race for them, and uh, seeing the numbers of uh, Etix Quickstep, you'd think having five riders here, they were in a very good uh, position of uh, dominating this race, but you can just see how things change. So good call. Plenty of ambition for Rollins to, uh, to keep driving on and make it as tough as possible for the four riders behind, keep De Buscra as fresh as possible for as long as possible. Rollins relatively uh, relaxed run through the feed for him in terms of not having any difficulty in picking up his uh, his bottle Haas riding hard behind him what's happening uh, behind in that group have they managed to get organized who's taking responsibility who's got only the... looks like uh, top sport Flandre and now the second division team uh, Steve Bad is up towards the front as well so with uh, most of the teams here represented, you see one of the riders up here from uh, Giant Shimano. I don't think uh, Degenkov has made it here. Uh, you can see um, Chavanel for uh, Iam towards the front, but again, it's who's got the numbers to, to chase and, and who's got the uh, strength to chase. Um, this does look as if this um, a very good group now is starting to form very strong riders. Um, just looking. Uh, Peter Sagan is in the middle of this group, but absolutely no teammates left at all. Uh, Lobato is there for Movistar. Again, no teammates. Great to see Scott Thwaites on the right-hand side there for uh, Bora, fighting his way, the Yorkshireman. Um, Selig is there, looks like Leukemans, or is that... Uh, Leukemans is definitely there, but uh, somebody doesn't like his bike, and that looks like Jack Bauer. Oh, Cannondale. Garmin rider, is it Jack Bauer, has uh, come to grief at the feed zone. Oh, he's going to make up with it now. <laughs> oh, gets oh. stuck in his back wheel. Is it a jacket or a muse? Jacket. Yeah. Well, that's uh, the statement made by uh, Jack Bauer. Uh, his level of contentment at the moment. Probably around zero or a minus factor. Not too much activity in that group behind. Christian Canese, he's certainly not uh, interested in chasing it. He's got a teammate in the shape of uh, Geraint Thomas a little bit further up. Luca Paolini has realised something has to happen. Something has to happen. And the Katusha man realised that just aren't the, uh, the troops behind that are going to be able to do anything. So now this looks like uh, he's decided to go off on what's going to be a very, very tough chase indeed. One of the Trek Factory racing riders, I think, uh, with ambition to perhaps chase him. Yeah, this is uh, Rast uh, trying to come across uh, to Paolini. These are the, the strong men of today so far. Uh, Oz for BMC, Thomas of Sky, uh, Van Mark of Elotto uh, Jumbo. Uh, Van der Berg has decided not, he's not contributing uh, and trying to use this uh, breakaway. De Bichere won't uh, contribute because he's got a teammate in front of uh, Rollins. I'm not too sure if this, uh, this combination will work. Uh, we have got one rider in front, that's Rollins, but uh, only three riders with two passengers in the group of five and it doesn't look as if it's, uh, it's going to work for them today. Well, De Buscara would be head and shoulders the fastest sprinter in this group, assuming, uh, well, all things being equal, and he, if he has the right energy at the end, and that's always assuming he makes it. Any uh, energy reserves he had are being uh, saved by dint of the fact that he is getting this free passage at the moment. Well, they have got a passenger, the Belgian champion. Van der Berg looked as if he wasn't totally content and uh, willing to help these uh, other riders because they did have five in front and they'd probably be a lot more happy at Etix Quickstep if they had 
uh, one other rider here because uh, this is the man really on form, Geraint Thomas. Does look exceptionally well. Van Mark really up for uh, a win today as well. Has looked well. And uh, Lotto Jumbo have uh, ridden a good race. Uh, BMC rider Daniel Oss is looking strong. He's attacking Poggio Milan San Remo. It does look strong. But just a nod of the head, a push in the back for Van Mark from uh, Stein van der Berg. He's playing a canny game. He knows that he had his earpiece out. He got himself in the breakaway and he's uh, sitting pretty doesn't have to contribute too much because he does have uh, four riders behind. 43 seconds between Rollins and this group behind. Rollins is doing a manful job at the moment because uh, there's three riders riding up in this group, just uh, one rider behind. And what's the advantage between group two and group three? Because that is the really interesting uh, time gap. I just don't think this is the, um, the right combination here. Um, Geraint is there. Oss and Van Maart, they want to ride, but uh, they've got a couple of passions just now, but this man won't worry about it. He's on his own, 47 seconds in front. Uh, they have plenty of options, he just has to commit himself. Still a long way to go, uh, just over 62 kilometres. Uh, he knows he's got Debussy, the Belgian champion, behind, and uh, they know they have uh, Andrew Greip also, so they do have options. Yeah, how content will the others to be towing a sprinter of the calibre of Jens de Busker around with them? At the moment, they'll be happy to have separated themselves from all the other good sprinters that have managed to survive in that group behind. Not that there are too many at this point. Jürgen Rollins, we did see some evidence from Top Sport Vlanderen attempting to organize some sort of a chase behind, albeit with just a couple of representatives in the group. Not sure if one of them was Yellow Wallace, he's their, uh, their superstar. Took the Dwar Store Vlanderen just a few days ago. This is Paulini trying to come across here. Left a little late. These uh, five riders in front, just behind. You've got to look at Paulini off Katusha. Still Jürgen Rollins in front for Lotto Sudal. Sepp van Mark rides through, and they're getting a turn now from Stan Vandenberg, so. Interesting that he is riding through now. It's obviously a change of heart. 55 seconds to Rollins up front. Has that contributed to the thinking? Wouldn't say this is the uh, smartest move for uh, Van der Berg, especially when they had five riders behind and uh, Paulini coming up here. And who's going to chase? You think that uh, Katusha had a couple of riders there uh, to help uh, Christoph. Uh, they're deciding to put Paulini down the roads. So who is left to chase behind? This is a gap creeping up ever, ever more. 55 seconds now to uh, to Rollins with this uh, group of five soon to be joined by Paulini, not giving 100%. Well, Jürgen Rollins now 29 years of age. Belgian rider, he's been with this team for, well, since, since uh, 2012. He signed up through till 2017, so he's got a contract for the next couple of years. And uh, seventh in E3 on Friday, clearly has very strong form indeed on the Euro Metropole Tour in 2012. Third in Tour of Flanders in 2013. Second in E3 in 2011. Still waiting for this, the, uh, the massive win on Flanders roads, but uh, one of the most capable classics riders out there and really putting it up. And look at this, two minutes and three seconds. Is it game over? Still 60 kilometers left. There's a long, long way to go. Well, the thing is, who's going to chase? You know, you look at the riders that are in front now, and um, who's going to chase? You've got uh, one to Group Gobert. You've got one rider from uh, Giant Alpacin there on the right-hand side. You've got uh, one rider from Tinkoff, uh, Sagan. You've got Seelig for MTN Quebec. So, again, it's, uh, it's all about numbers. Savage ride here by uh, Paolini. Paolini is just about managing to haul and winch himself across this gap. These riders are riding up there, have a little look around and suddenly realize they've been joined by the veteran Italian from Team Katusha, has been given free reign to take his own chances this afternoon, worked in the service of uh, Alexander Kristoff in recent days, but Paolini has now managed to race across, making it a group of six, chasing the lone leader, that is uh, Jürgen Rollins, and that's uh, another contributor to the chase. He'll take a few moments just to gather his breath, get a gel. Oss rolling through for BMC.
60 kilometers remaining in Ghent Wev again with Jurgen Rollins up front now with uh, almost 50 seconds advantage on the group of six behind it's been carnage all afternoon amazing racing on the Flanders roads huge gusts of wind whipping across the riders driving them into echelons Riders struggling to stay on their bikes, not just the usual touch of wheel type crashes, but uh, crashes as a result of riders just being literally swept off the road in great big, uh, great big groups. And as a result, well, the racing kicked off a lot earlier than you might expect, not the uh, slow burner. This one has been absolutely frenetic right from the start. And now we have a situation where Jurgen Rollins is the sole leader, chased by a group of six. And now that, would you believe it, is the remains of the peloton in the race they call the Sprinters Classic. Two minutes in arrears of Jurgen Rollins, a minute and 10 seconds behind the uh, group of six up front, containing, well, representatives of most of the major teams. Top Sport Vlaanderen have missed out from the uh, second tier. Arnaud Demar is in there. No Francis de Jure representative in the group. And this is the uh, the group of six that are chasing Rollins. With Geraint Thomas, winner of E3 just a couple of days ago in absolutely flying form, finds himself up front. Daniel Oss there for BMC, the imposing figure. Even more imposing figure of uh, Etik's quick step in the shape of Stein van den Berg. Step van Mark gives a little encouraging push to Geraint Thomas. Sooner or later, Van Mark's going to get a really, really big result, and he's just got a great think, opportunity today. Just don't think this race is over yet. There's still a long way to go, and uh, I don't think uh, Ethics and the showing it now are, will be overly happy. It's just have been one representative in front, so a big race for them, and you know, two up there for uh, Lotto Sudal. So a big effort there. Ras never made it. That was a point to go with Paulini, so uh, he didn't make it. Matteo Trentin comes up. Quinziato on the wheel. So it's Greg Van Avermaet, but uh, no real concerted chase. A lot of uh, single riders from different teams. You can see Tinkoff gets uh, Sagan there. One rider from Cofidis, one rider from MTN Quebec, one rider from uh, Cannondale. Jack Bauer is obviously made up from, with his uh, bike. Uh, one rider from uh, Movistar. So, again, no real numbers uh, to uh, get involved with this chase. Well, this is absolutely fascinating because Stein Vandenberg up front initially kicked this off while his uh, team leader, the rider you would expect would be his team leader, following the uh, the absence from the fray of Mark Cavendish. That's Zdenek Stebar. Stebar had punctured, was making his way back to the group at the very moment that uh, Stein Vandenberg Happened to have his radio out of his ear and didn't realize what was happening. Rolled off the front. He's now contributing to the effort to try and stay oh, clear. Oh and, oh, and Thomas is off. Oh, and that is a big, big problem for the winner of E3. Rolls over, and we only hope that he is OK. And that is a big, big moment in ghent again because the winner of E3 two days ago and probably the strongest rider at the moment and in that group. A shake of the head from Daniel Oss as if to say, there, but for the grace of uh, all sorts of gods go I because that was a close one now what has happened do we see the in the background the sky team car was stopped and helping Geraint Thomas to get back into the fray but it's well you'd be, it'd be a very impressive ride if Geraint Thomas is able to get back into that group he did land in the verge uh, looked as if he did have a, a soft enough landing but uh, you don't want to see riders crash like that and uh, being blown off the road so we've, we've seen this all day uh, the tiredness is um, starting to hit the riders and unfortunately just get blown off and, you know, into the verge he went and over he went. So you'll find yourself in this uh, group which will change the dynamics again. Uh, Christian Keniz is in the group behind. Um, so this race, for me, I don't think is quite over yet. Um, Etix quick step possibly will want to try and get uh, a smaller chase group involved. So now, has Christian Kinesi got the got the legs to really be of significant advantage to Geraint Thomas? Thomas, is he back on his bike? There's the scene in the Sky Team car now, going up alongside uh, to give their instructions and perhaps a bottle to uh, Geraint Thomas. No doubt there'll uh, be a little bit of shelter being provided there as well. It's coming from the other side, isn't it? There's not a lot you can do in this circumstance um, because the race is splitting up. We are you not know, into the finale of a race and. You know, I know we saw uh, Steve Barr get the magic spanner and uh, you know a couple of bottles out. There's not a lot he can do because he's in the middle of nowhere, and obviously the uh, the referees and commissaires will be watching this. So 
Yeah, it's not it's not quite the same thing being helped back to a to a group of uh, five riders as it is being helped. You know, getting some sort of measure of assistance back to a large peloton. He's just debugging into his uh, radio now. He really wants to know what to do now. They're in a, a difficult situation. They look very strong, having five riders in the front group. But now they've only got one rider in this uh, group of uh, five. Still, Jürgen Rollins has got one minute and 15. He looks super strong today. And uh, the Bichere, the Belgian champion, having a free ride. So it does look very, very much look as if it's... Uh, uh, great uh, performance by uh, Lotto Sudal so far today, but we said this about other teams as we see the Valiant uh, fight to get back from uh, Geraint Thomas. Big challenge now for Geraint Thomas. 120 now, the gap between, well, I'll tell you what, Jurgen Rollins is really putting it up to the other. Still got 56.4 kilometres to go, but Geraint Thomas races back up to the other four, and I think that's just an indication of the sort of savage form he's on at the moment. A pursuiter by trade, give him uh, a carrot, like, uh, what, 20, 30 second gap to close within a few kilometers well he's absolutely the perfect man for the job especially when he's on form like this they'll be delighted to see him back as well i think in, in one respect in as much as he's going to add extra impetus and it looks like they're going to need it because rollins is doing a very strong job and you calling for team assistance perhaps uh, needs to have a little conversation what are they going to do now luca paolini rolling through he's on the front for katusha just on his wheel, the man who's just made it back into the fray after that uh, spectacular tumble into the ditch, Geraint Thomas. Sepp van Mark of Lotto Jumbo in the yellow colours. This group is not far behind. Just look at the, the time gaps now. And they've decided to um, they try to close the gap. Um, see Nicky Tertra on the attack trying to go across. So it did look as if in, in Etik's quick step, not overly happy. Only have one rider there trying to fire a rider across here. But... Uh, He's got uh, 48 seconds to make up. Former Dutch champion Nicky Terpster, winner of Paris-Roubaix 12 months ago. Got a big rendezvous on the cobble roads in northern France in a couple of weeks' time. But uh, in the meantime, he's got an important rendezvous with the group up front and he's got to get across to it. So clearly they're not uh, happy to back Stein Vandenberg for the win. He's not noted as a sprinter. He's not noted as uh, being someone who can close out a classic win, albeit he usually is there in the mix coming up to the final, in or around the final, but uh, never the man to get it across the line. So Edex Quickstep not satisfied with the composition of that group ahead, and Nicky Terpster is going to try and ride across to it rather than merely just uh, putting the Edex Quickstep squad, such as it is, onto the front of that group behind and towing up other riders. It's a big gamble. Will he be able to make it across? Well, they did put in a bit of an effort before, um, so trying to fire a rider across. And they'll get it in their ears, the riders in the front, and they'll um, try and put the pressure on. They do not want uh, Nicky Tertra to make it up to have two um, Etics uh, boys. So the team that um, is showing, I wouldn't say dominance, but showing... Um, Good tactical uh, sense today is Lotto Sudal. They put Rollins in front. Martin Talingi was Lotto Yumbo, and they were trying to do exactly what we're doing here. Having Talingi in front and Seth Van Mark would be able to uh, to ride in the wheels. But uh, this team here, Lotto Sudal, have turned it around, put Rollins in front, and it means that the Bouchere, the uh, Belgian champion, can have a free ride behind. And also they've got uh, Andre Greipo in the uh, group behind of Estiba. About eight kilometres to the next climb. That's the Bannerberg, the uh, short, sharp shock one, 300 metres. A little uh, ramp up of 20% at the beginning of that. And Rolands is increasing his advantage. Now 141 to the group behind, who are uh, less than 49 seconds between the group of six riders and the remains of the peloton. So Rolands, who was, as I said, seventh in uh, E3 a couple of days ago and 11th in Milan San Remo last week, Clearly on flying form. Is he using up his legs too early? Well, he's doing a great job for his team one way or another. Bit of an ask for him to last out there for another uh, another 50 kilometers plus. You get the sense that the impetus has gone out of this group, that they're just rolling through. Not really. Yeah, it's kind of difficult for them when they've got uh, Van de Berg and the uh, Boucheret just uh, sitting on the back as uh, passengers. Uh, four riders uh, now committed. Paulini had already made a, a big, big effort, so it does look as if it is an opportunity from uh, what's left of the peloton so for some riders to try and come across. 
Now, Rollins looks great on a bike, doesn't he? In that classic pose, perfect 90-degree angle between his upper arm and then his lower arm as he sits on the tops. Puts himself into a place of sustainable suffering. Monte Group Gobert and managed to get him. Is that Ungelval? Here comes uh, Wilfred Peters up to um, have a chat with uh, Van der Berg. Yeah, just can't get ahead of the group quick enough. So now the group behind. 45 seconds behind the uh, group of six ahead. And we think, we've not seen uh, reports yet, but we think that um, Etix Quickstep have got a one rider in between, and that's um, Nicky Tepstra. Nicky Tepstra trying to make his way forward to this uh, group in front. Can't see him in this group at all. Yeah, it would be nice to get that information. That would also very much change the dynamics. If Terpster gets over there, then then they'll start riding. Certainly, Vandenberg will go on the front at that point. I think that's why he's decided not to ride, because uh, Tetra is trying to come across to that uh, group of six. So Etix quick step, some interesting and unusual tactics. And uh, so often in these races, because they've been so strong for so long and have such a strong uh, collection of classics riders, that the, the, the scrutiny is all that more intense on how they play their tactics. But well, this man has to be very careful now. He cannot uh, go too much into the red. Still over 50 kilometers to go. He's on his own, no shelter whatsoever. And uh, in these conditions, you can blow big time. So he just has to be uh, very careful and uh, try and measure his, er his effort now. Ronan's continuing to increase his advantage. Well, he's, just made it across. he's made it across. It looks like Nicky Terpstra has made it across. So a big, big effort. And uh, now Etix Quickstep in a, a very good uh, position now. They put two riders now at the front of this race. Or near the front. Zone. So this is actually an extra rider who can make a contribution. More important than that, then one of the riders that's in there that's not making contribution will be called back into into action and he'll be on duty and uh, this could be an interesting moment for Jürgen Rollins as Luca Paolini drags the group along. Terpstra makes the junction. They'll be happier now to have in two riders but uh, the fact that um, Van der Berg is sat on, he'll have to come to the front now so um, Van der Berg has got to do a lot of hard work and I think uh, Nicky Terpstra will have to help him now but uh, this is a better position now for uh, Etty's quick step so we have seven riders chasing down one rider who's at uh, 1 minute and 48 seconds. So the group of five became six with the addition of Luca Paolini. Five again with the uh, crash. Relatively benign one. Relatively, I say. Uh, uh, that uh, happened to uh, Geraint Thomas, but he was uh, no harm done. Back in the fray, back up to six. And now Nicky Serbstra has made it seven riders up front, including two riders from Etix Quickstep and Terpstra. Not too shy about going to the front of the field. Chris Porter is on Twitter, at DQ Sport for myself, at Bryce Smithy, hashtag home of cycling. I would love to see Luca Paolini win. He's always up there working hard. He is always there, thereabouts. He's around a long time now, the Katusha rider, but he knows exactly where to place himself. And even if the legs aren't always perfect at the back end of, uh, of a classic, well, he's a, he's a tough, tough classics man and really intelligent rider, knows exactly where to be pretty much every point. A little bit of activity in the group behind. Yeah, this is uh, Matt Heyman now for Orica. They've got two riders in this group, and I uh, said many teams with only one rider. So very difficult for them. They're just trying to create a, a small chasing group now. Still time for any of these riders. If we can get uh, five or six riders working well together, they can make it back to the front. A local team, uh, Wanty Group Gobert, have also managed to get two riders in there. It looks like a Marcato and Leukemans for Wanty Group Gobert. Just noticed that uh, also uh, Tinkoff were uh, talking to us again. Memorials to so many different nations around Flanders Fields. And this area is absolutely dotted with, uh, with 
with graveyards, cemeteries of all sorts of types. And literally thousands of unmarked graves representing well, a time that must not be forgotten. That John Beetle says, uh, not many harder man than Geraint Thomas. What a ride to get back on. Yeah, he absolutely flew up there, didn't he? He's on good form, there's no doubt about it. And one would hope for Thomas that he's uh, retaining enough energy for battles to come, because we're still just arriving at the point of this race that you would start to describe as the uh, as the final on an average classic stay. Look at the way that flag is blowing on the left-hand side. Just as Roland goes past that gap in the buildings, the uh, bike is almost whipped from under him. And once he's uh, through this small hamlet, he'll be back into the wind in a big way. Mark Sargent just giving him a gel saying it was open, so he could just uh, squeeze it in. He'll need every ounce of energy he can get. 147 in front of seven riders, including uh, Van Mark, Thomas, Oz, Van der Berg, De Boucher, Paulini and Tertra. But the gap creeping up ever more to the peloton now. Peter Kirk uh, pointing out it wasn't that mild a spill for uh, Garen Thomas. Yes, it was. It was, a, it was a spectacular crash over the handlebars, but luckily, as Brian said, a relatively soft landing from his point of view. No harm done, but uh, awful to see riders just being literally blown off the road. Inside 50 kilometres to go, one minute and 53 seconds is the advantage that our lone leader out front, Jurgen Rollins, has managed to eke out over this group of uh, now it has swelled to seven riders who have uh, now got what looks like a two minute advantage on the group behind so the chase behind from what was the main peloton has disintegrated a little bit lately as these seven riders up front chase our, our lone leader You're looking at the remains of the main peloton in Ghent Wevelgem. We're inside 50 kilometers to go in the one they call the Sprinters Classic, and these riders are in danger of being completely out of it. Peter Sagan, the reigning champion on the podium the last three years in a row, and a very, very frustrated figure. He's the lone Dinkov Saxo in there. He's got no teammates to help with the chase, and there doesn't seem to be any impetus here because we've got uh, seven riders uh, out front of them by over two minutes at this point getting up towards uh, two and a half minutes advantage to those seven, and then further up the road by another two minutes, our lone leader, Jürgen Rollins of Lotto Sudal. He's been out there since 77 to go, so 30 kilometers on his own at this point, and what a ride he's doing. Still seems full of fight as he hits uh, the next climb. This is the Bannerberg, a short, sharp shock. Hands from the Isle of Man have made their way to see how Mark Cavendish is getting on well, not getting on terribly well. Caught out with a uh, crash early on, managed to get back on, and then a puncture at just the worst possible moment in the midst of uh, an echelon dogfight up near the coast. And he was uh, dispensed with jettison from the fray at that point, so no luck for uh, Mark Cavendish. Having said that, his Etix Quick Step team are still very, very much involved in this. They've got two riders in that group of seven chasing behind. Stan Vandenberg and the reigning champion of Paris-Roubaix, Nicky Terpstra. The Dutchman have made it into that group of seven, Terpstra having chased across from the remains of the peloton. And now Rollins. Has squeezed himself up and over that climb, down the descent, gets first sight of these muddy, muddy roads. He's starting to feel it now, surely, Brian. You would think so, but he still looks strong enough, holding the gap of uh, two minutes, and they are riding behind him, the seven riders, and, you know, looking at the peloton, that's creeping back now. Uh, it was a case of about uh, almost 50 seconds at one point. Nicky Tertra um, zipped across the gap, and the only chance for the, uh, the riders now in the peloton uh, to do anything is for a big attack on the, the Kemmelberg. Maybe take um, six or seven, possibly eight riders with you. 
all committed to try and come back to this A group because they do not look at this point to be riding flat out because they know they've got De Boucher, the Belgian champion, just sitting pretty on the back. He's not done anything at all. He made a big effort to go with this group. Um, so a tough day for everybody, but we're into this uh, strong headwind and nobody wanting to commit themselves 100%. And uh, Rowlands has, has got nobody to worry about apart from himself and obviously the uh, road in front of him. Plus, they might, they must simply all be quite tired I and mean, trying to save the last few joules of energy to try and uh, scrimp together resources for battles to come because still 47 kilometers remaining. Interesting uh, viewpoint on Twitter at DQ Sport for myself, Bryce Smithy, hashtag home of cycling. Uh, and Richard M is saying, proving Sagan was a poor signing for Tinkoff Saxo. No support, no team, all round poor fit. It's not really. Peter Sagan's fault, is it, that he uh, has no teammates with him? He's done his job and managed to make it into that group. But uh, unfortunately not able to chase it all down on his own. When you look at that team, I think it's a strong team. Bodnar, Brescio, Kolar, Markov, Tozato, Trusov and Brut. Brut was in the original um, attack. The group of seven that went away near the start and, you know, it did look good having a ride on the break and uh, not having to do anything, but... You've got to remember when the, uh, the race decimated and they cross winds, there's, there's a lot of the riders uh, being blown about and many of the riders don't like that. It got uh, really dangerous and uh, all of a sudden he finds himself in that position. Etix quick step at uh, about five riders in front. Then when Vandenberg went away with this group, he fired um, Nicky Terpstra across, but they're just riding. Uh, they're not riding to try and bring back... Uh, Roland's back at the moment. Uh, they're probably waiting for the uh, Kemmelberg, and I think that's where they have to try and do something. They have to try and uh, get rid of the uh, the passenger on the back, the Bushera. Uh, they think we might see some attacks on the uh, Kemmelberg, and possibly from this group as, as well, but it's getting too much now. It's over um, it's almost three and a half minutes now, back to this group from the uh, seven riders in front. Yeah, 5.25 from the front to the main group. Thanks to Mike Evans for pointing it out that uh, Peter Sagan didn't win this race last year. It was John Degenkolb, of course. He's the reigning champion of ghent Wevelgem. Sagan has been on the podium the last three years, though. And now, just a little bit of activity in that group. Uh, Zev Vandenberg making his presence felt on the front. Geraint Thomas playing a watching brief. Daniel Oss, he's been in fine form, hasn't he, since the start of the classic season. Absolutely stormed down the podio. Uh, the Cipresa, a couple of uh, last week, uh, carrying that form through to Belgium. Uh, two minutes in arrears. Will they manage to make further inroads? Craig Broughton is calling Nicky Terpster for the win. Well, there's a long way to go yet before we can... Uh, well, you can make a prediction any time, I suppose, but anything could happen. I wouldn't rule out Geraint Thomas at the moment on the form he's got. No, not at all. Not at all. We're going to see some action. It's not all over yet. Still have that one rider in front. Lotto Sudal rider Jürgen Rollins has done a terrific job today. Luke Paolini checking his seams. Obviously very relaxed in there, making sure everything's straight something slightly different than that inside two minutes now so they are starting to uh, that gap is starting to creep down bearing in mind they've just come up over the hill Roland still looks though like he's uh, got plenty of fight in there one senses that surely the strength will diminish at some time soon it would be a remarkable thing if a man could stay clear for 77 kilometers to win a world tour race on his own I suppose the saving fact is, um, just looking at the, the map and the way the wind is blowing now, that uh, the final at least 20 kilometres are pretty much straight into um, Wevelgem. And it should be pretty much a, a tailwind at that point. So um, if you can get to that point with uh, two minutes, it still could be doable. But uh, it's, it's been an epic ride by uh, Roland so far. Yeah, explain why a tailwind is generally to the advantage of the rider who's already uh, made the gap. 
Well, if it was a headwind, he would slow right down because of the, and it would be easier for the uh, seven riders in front to bring him back, or six riders that got one passenger, because they'd be swapping turns, and they'd be swapping turns uh, against the headwind. With the tailwinds, obviously, it's going to be benefit the chase and uh, the rider in front, but for Roland on his own, it's going to benefit him because uh, everybody knows what it's like with a tailwind and riding into a headwind when you're on your own. It's uh, somewhat easier to have a, a tailwind. So he just has to try and get to that point in about uh, just over 20 kilometres time. Uh, still not going to be easy because uh, this group is not finished yet. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to see some uh, activity maybe the next up time uh, up the uh, Kemoba. Just a group behind, inside two minutes now. One minute and 53 seconds, and this is a critical phase. Will they start to make further inroads? Group behind, plenty of conversation going on. Lotto Yumbo go to the front. They're not interested in chasing. They've got Sepp van Mark doing a fine job for them uh, up front in that group of seven. So they'll just put the brakes on, block the road. Well, this was the uh, original attacker, Martin Talingi, on the right-hand side. Uh, Adrian Petit for there for uh, Covidus. Uh, Giant Alpesin, I've got one rider there on the left-hand side, but uh, so many riders have only got one or two riders and nobody really wanting to um, to go to the front of this group. So I think it's all over for these guys if they want to come back to the front of the race. And so the race is going to be over uh, up to the uh, eight riders out in front. Roland still commanding a lead of just under two minutes from Van Mark, Thomas, Oss, Vandenberg, De Bichere, Paulini and Terpstra. And the way the tactics are uh, playing at the moment, uh, Dubush are in a very good place for Lotto Sudal. He's got uh, Rollins down the road, and Dubush are uh, one of the uh, fastest sprinters in that group. Edwin Squire saying uh, it certainly would be remarkable if Rollins could stay clear for fully 77 kilometres. But uh, let's not forget that Tom Bonin managed to win Paris Roubaix. It's about 50k, wasn't it? That, uh, that solo run in for. Tom Bonin a few years ago. Tom Bonin, one of the most famous classic riders of all time, the, one of the preeminent riders of his generation, that's for sure. Unfortunately absent from the classic scene this, uh, this year. And we wish him well in his recovery from injury. Jürgen Rowlands yet to make the big break breakthrough in terms of one-day classic success. If he hung on here, it would be a famous win and uh, would never have to buy a beer in Flanders again. Two minutes now, so he stretched it out again. He's maintaining the tempo, maintaining the advantage, just starting to nod a little bit. Head moving around. The peloton almost six minutes in arrears from the lone reader. A lone leader, so almost four minutes back from the group behind. I think it's fair to say that the seven riders chasing the lone leader are the ones that will fight it out for victory in this year's Ghent Wevel game. Apparently nobody beats uh, Zdenek Stibar at Scrabble. That's the uh, the ultimate uh, classic rider's Scrabble name. Are we allowing proper names into Scrabble now? Luca Paolini has taken his rain jacket off, so conditions significantly improved in terms of wind and rain. Still plenty of wind out there, and as we've seen, when you go past buildings, Sudden gusts can just catch the uh, catch the bike, and when they're out into open countryside, as we've seen recently, uh, Garen Thomas caught out as the wind whipped across his small group. Rollins gets the encouragement, and he's going to need all the encouragement he can get because this is a big ask for him. Radio goes in, comes back out again. I think he's struggling with it um, and trying to. Uh, he keeps on trying to put it in his ear sometimes, so you get. Uh, a bit of tape, and obviously in these conditions it's come out, so it keeps on popping out his ear. He just wants to know the time gap. He's through Camel, who have just been through that uh, the cobblestones there, heading towards the Camelberg for the second and last time. Got to go over the Camelberg, and then he's got the Monteberg, where he went actually on the attack. 
across to Tilingi and straight past them he finds himself alone. He just has to try and get to about the uh, 20, just over 22 kilometre mark and then he should have uh, a bit of a tailwind and if he has two minutes then it's doable. Question on Twitter earlier about whether the uh, the teams all have different frequencies, whether the other teams can listen in. I'm not sure whether they're scrambling the signals, but uh, they certainly would have different frequencies, otherwise things get very confused. They do have different frequencies, but sometimes in races um, you start to hear other teams on the same frequency. Um, and there was an occasion where uh, one team were uh, actually <laughs> blocking all the um, uh, radio signals in the last hour of a race. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about that, but uh, yeah, there is some uh, Just tactical tell us things. What team happen. and which race? <laughs> <laughs> you can leave it at that. It always happened with an hour to go. Wow, a good time for it to happen. What are the chances? 40 kilometres to go now in Gantwell again. Not much more than an hour of racing left for uh, Jurgen Rollins, although it's a big ask for him. And for all the riders out there, they've been battered by wind and rain all afternoon. Can they manage 40 kilometres in the final hour? It would be an impressive performance, albeit they do have a tailwind, and it's worth considering that they are the best riders in world cycling. Now two minutes and nine seconds. Rollins is riding a stormer. And remember, he doesn't have that many more hills to do because he's now uh, making his way up the penultimate climb of the day. This is where the biggest crowd is going to be. The Kemmelberg, he's absolutely dying on his wheels, isn't he? This is uh, maximum 19% on this climb and he's feeling every one of those percentage points at the moment. Has to stay in the saddle, those glistening cobbles mean that uh, out of the saddle there's just no traction whatsoever. Well, there's been plenty of encouragement, but we're going to see a reaction now from this uh, group of seven. Somebody has to make a, a big reaction, and I think maybe Geraint Thomas might be looking at this now. It's going to come. You can sense it, you can feel it. The riders behind, they've been riding a tempo that's been maintaining the gap to the rider up front, but not been uh, making any inroads in it. And for all that uh, Rollins is an absolutely stunning rider, a stunning talent, and doing a, producing a truly epic ride, you feel that uh, the riders behind could have closed this gap a little bit more than they have done laterally. Having said that, they've maintained the gap to the riders behind. The peloton not able to cobbled together any sort of a chase and now more than four minutes behind inside the final 40k. Roland just has to just uh, maintain a good tempo up here. He doesn't ride, have to ride flat out. A bit of a grimace there. Just has to get over this climb uh, safely down the other side. He's got uh, one small climb yet to come and he's getting ever so closer to um, you know the run into uh, Wevelgen but we are going to see a big reaction from the seven behind. We're waiting. He's waiting. Everybody senses that it's coming. Three kilometers in total to Kendallberg, so it's the longest, uh, longest till they face. And they'll be delighted to know that he's done it twice. He doesn't have to do it anymore. Monteberg uh, is one kilometer in length, average of 12%. Sorry, average of 7.3%, maximum of 12%, and that is reached with 34 kilometers remaining. So once he crests the summit, here he'll have about another 3k to the bottom of the Monteberg. Now they're on the cobbles too, and here it comes because the uh, group of seven behind have hit the lower slopes of the Kemmelberg. Stein Vandenberg on the uh, on the back of the group. Nicky Terpster on the front. No, it's, it's Vandenberg goes up the front, actually. Terpster now on the left-hand side for Eddick's quick step, realises that he's got to get a little bit further up. On the left-hand side at the front is Daniel Oss. He looks over his right shoulder, he looks over his left and sees that Nicky Terpstra is the one that puts in the dig. Terpstra it is, that is uh, racing clear. Has the gap, and who's going to be able to chase it down? Well, Geraint Thomas is next up. Vandenberg looks like he's really suffering, and nobody's able to get on terms with Terpstra. Geraint Thomas, we predicted, would be there, thereabouts. Van Mark isn't enjoying it. Luca Paolini, he chased across the gap, and now he's really, really feeling the effects. De Busker has had a free ride, and he's 
clinging on manfully to Sepp Van Mark. Daniel Oss looks like a beaten docket at the moment. Will he be able to get up to the top in time? It's a three kilometer hill, remember. Two minutes and nine seconds still. As Thomas manages to winch himself back onto the wheel of Nicky Terpstra. So now the group has become two. This is a perfect uh, tandem, Geraint uh, Thomas and uh, Nicky Terpstra. The Dubish are in trouble a little bit now with the uh, Oss, and uh, this is a big effort now by Nicky Terpstra. If Geraint Thomas can uh, hang on, then the two riders uh, could possibly go across to Rolands. Paulini stalls, and he'll do well now to get back to Dubuskara. Dubuskara, in turn, is on the wheel of Daniel Oss, and they desperately need to get back as quick as they can because there are two Etix Quickstep riders up front. Stan Vandenberg has found some sort of energy in himself. He's managed to... Uh, Get a toe from Sepp Van Mark onto the wheel of Geraint Thomas. It's Terpstra that leads Thomas, then Van Mark, and Stan Vandenberg, two Eddix quick step riders of the four. And will they be able to maintain the gap to the riders behind? Because Daniel Oss has the best sprinter of the lot in this group, Jens de Buskera for company. Still two minutes and seven seconds. To Jurgen Rowlands up front. Well, he's coming back to Buskera. It was a very important rider here, and if he can make it back to these. Uh, four in front, then it could be uh, game over. Rolands could take this uh, title today if he manages to stay away, but again, it's uh, about to push it. If you can get rid of him, then uh, you've got a very workman-like group. Here they come. Jürgen Rollins through the uh, cavalcade of tractors. Left and right for all that it's a protest. There's massive, massive support for all the riders in Flanders this afternoon. He's a Belgian. He's 29 years of age, and they're all cheering what is a stunning performance. Regardless of how it turns out, it's been an epic ride from Jürgen Rolands. And that little bit of activity behind has, uh, has helped them slice a few seconds off the lead, but not a whole lot. And that's a hell of a klaxon sound for Jürgen Rollins. Those shovels uh, make for great grandstands, don't they? What's he got left? Jürgen Rollins. Desperate to try and cling on, and uh, look at that update from the GPS suggests there's now only one and a half minutes. So that uh, big burst of activity on the Kemmelberg has certainly had a big effect. And Daniel Oss looks like he might make it in. Dubuskara is back up with the leaders, so the Kemmelberg hasn't uh, proved to be significant in terms of splitting them up. Luca Paolini, too, is scrabbling to try and get back in ter on terms. So it looks like uh, the Kemmelberg, good old scrap, but not enough in terms of uh, splitting them up. Oh, and Oss has absolutely stood still in the road, so he almost made it back on and then finds himself absolutely shattered in that headwind. The important De rider in that group in front is Debuchere. He can just sit on the back of the other riders in front and uh, if they come off onto uh, the bigger roads, then he only has to sit there. They had to get rid of him. They haven't done that as we head back to uh, what's left of the peloton, led by towns of Topsport London. Well, BMC have riders in this group. They're not chasing now, but uh, they'll be devastated to find that Daniel Oss, for all his fantastic form in recent weeks, just hasn't quite got it. And I wonder if he's going to be able to make it back to that group. One more climb to come. Do you think Oss or uh, Paulini are going to make this? No, it's uh, certainly not Oss, Paulini. And you can see the riders becoming ever smaller in the distance. Stan Vandenberg goes to the front. It was Terpstra that split them up. And now he'll try and save uh, a little bit of energy, try and regroup to do it all again on the final climb of the day. The Monteberg coming up very shortly. Kevin Chavanel leading the uh, what's left of the peloton from Towns. Trenton in third place there. They're on the bottom of the Kemmelberg. Christian Canace for Team Sky. Gerald Tielek and uh, big hopes look at Peter Sagan towards the back of the group. Very frustrated figure, as indeed is Anna DeMar. Scott Fitz is hanging in there also. 
Well, super ride by Scott Thwaites. For Argon rider, but, uh, Andre Greipel. A long day in the saddle for the uh, German. Ultimately, to know. Needs to be comforted by knowing that he's got two teammates in front. Roland's in the lead. And then that group behind, you've got De Bichere, the Belgian champion. So Lotto Soudal still looking very pretty. Liam Ruth pointing out that the uh, Kemmelberg's 530 metres long. I suppose it is at its steepest point. I suppose it depends on where you pick it up. But the uh, graphics here indicating that it's uh, 530 metres long. The Monteberg is a kilometre. Paulini's actually made it back to this group of five to make it six. So the only, only person missing is Osh, just a, a little behind. De Boucher is just hanging on here. This is the last climb. He's been a passenger in this group for the last, what, 60, 60 kilometers. He hasn't had to put his nose in the wind because he's got a teammate in front. Nicky Terps are leading away from Seth Van Mark. Geraint Thomas still in there. He's already crashed, been on the deck. But he might have found it... Uh... He might have had a free ride, but he didn't find the Kemmelberg easy, so clearly not unlimited reserves of energy there for Dubuskara. All he needed to do was hang in, because uh, if he'd have lost this group and these four riders had gone down the roads, uh, I think they would have given absolute 100% to uh, come back to Rollins. And uh, so with 34 kilometers to go, Rollins still looks, he's got a shoe in for the win here, uh, but uh, Oss, Looks as if his legs have gone. He has ridden well today, but uh, he's just starting to tire now. now. He's a disconsolate figure now, isn't he, Daniel Oss? What a great ride, what a great week it's been for him. Strong performance. Unfortunately, his team leader, Greg Van Avermaet, still uh, feeling the effects of that very, very heavy impact with the ground in E3. And is this uh, Chavanel? Sylvain Chavanel of the um, frustrated figure has decided to forge on alone. Surely a futile quest at this point. The Frenchman never knows when to say die, and he's... Heading out alone. Or 33, or at least a little bit longer, 34, 35 kilometer. Time trial. Another man on a time trial, an epic time trial. Jürgen Rollins, we almost forgot about him. He's still out there. One minute and 12 seconds, his advantage over the group of five behind. Group of six behind now, isn't it? With Paulini back in. And Roland's still hanging on. It'll be interesting to see what the situation is at the top of the Monteberg. Surely Roland's can't hang on to ahead of the combined forces of these riders behind. Two Etix quick step riders riding. Geraint Thomas is uh, riding. Van Mark is riding. Jens de Busker has got a free pass. Paulini, well, I wonder how much energy he's got to give. Never say die attitude, look, look at Paolini. Committed to his team as well when he has to ride for uh, Christoph, as we've seen in the Milan San Remo. Also, still got an opportunity of uh, making it back, but it uh, just goes to show you that uh, although Van der Berg's at the front, he got a feeling they're not committing 100%. Edix Quickstep have the, uh, have the numbers in this group if they do manage to tow back Rollins. How do they play it? I can only think now they have to get rid of De Boucher. Well, De Boucher is there. He's getting, even if they take back Rollins, De Boucher could possibly win this sprint. So they're pretty much in two minds now. What they do is commit themselves with De Boucher sat on and bring Rollins back. And then they're in with an opportunity to win. Uh, you just have to block out your mind that De Boucher is there. And they have to do it now, they have to do it quickly because then they can start attacking with two riders in front, they can start attacking and try and win. Uh, because I'm pretty sure that uh, if they do catch Rollins, he's going to be absolutely insane Scotland gupped. Uh, he's not going to have a lot of uh, energy left, so now's the time to do it. If you can bring him back, it means that uh, De Boucher, uh, will have possibly 25, 20 kilometres uh, to try and control things. He is a fresher man, but looking at his facial expressions and the way he rode to Kemmelberg, he's starting to feel it as well. So it's now or never. They have to bring Rollins back and then try and fight out the win. I do feel it's uh, going to come down to a, a solo performance today. 
Daniel Oss is still chasing. Let's not rule him out. He's still trying, and that enormous dig by uh, Stein Vandenberg there won't have done him any good in his efforts to try and get back on terms. Oss not enjoying the, the hill, but still goes uh, extremely quickly on the flat road. Similar, uh, similar experience for Vandenberg. Amazing dig. And now the gap is inside a minute for the first time in a long, long time. And there are still 31 and a half kilometers remaining for Jurgen Rollins, starting to drape the hands over the bars. He must be feeling it at this point. He's uh, nodding the head every few moments. His neck must be, uh, his neck muscles must be uh, absolutely shot at this stage. Not to mention his leg muscles. Yeah, no matter what the outcome, he's put a super right in. Um, it cannot think of a uh, time back where uh, somebody's put in a, a ride like this. It's been absolutely um, first class, but the gap is creeping down 53 uh, seconds. But you've got to remember, he is he is tired. He's been out there um, since about um, 70, just over 70 k's to go. Uh, but the other riders behind are tired. So if he can just try and hang on here, he'll be turning the uh, direction fairly soon, which will turn into more of a, a tailwind, and that might help him a little bit. It's uh, back to the uh, chase behind. Gerang Thomas, um, Terstra, Van Mark, uh, Van de Berg, De Boucher has been sat on. Paulini is not really contributing too much. Or still trying to make it uh, seven again. Going to be a close run thing. Sylvain Chavanel is still chasing behind. Will he be able to uh, hang on? Sylvain Chavanel chasing the group of uh, seven riders ahead of him. And the group in front is uh, of one. He's on the road to Wevelgem, but will he be able to hang on? 28 kilometers remaining for Jürgen Rollins. He's been out there since uh, about 77 kilometers to go. A futile attack, it appeared at that moment. A foolhardy, but he's still managing to hold off this group. Just inside 50 seconds, his advantage over this group of uh, six riders behind. Daniel Oss hasn't managed to get back to them. There are two Edix Quickstep riders there. We're having a little bit of a conversation. Does uh, Nicky Terpstra and Stein Vandenberg, you feel sure that the attacks are going to kick off very shortly. They're the ones with the numerical strength in this group. And the big threat, wearing the Belgian national champions uh, tricolor uh, colors there, is Jens de Buskere, Roland's Lotto Sedal teammate. De Buskere starting to roll towards the front now. Interesting to... Uh, He's just following the wheel and uh, get around to send to him, look, get to the back, shake of the head. He's just following the wheel, as you do. When you've got a teammate in front of you, you try and disrupt the chase and you do it in a professional manner. If uh, he lets the gap go and lets people in in front of him, but uh, if someone wants to get behind, everybody's getting tired in the group behind. No more um, tired than this man here. Still 47 seconds. If he can just get to as uh, close to the 20 k's to get that tailwind and and hopefully uh, the next of riding behind could uh, possibly help him. You can just see the speed is up ever so slightly. It's kind of head cross at this, uh, sorry, tail cross at this moment. So you can just see the uh, he's uh, starting to move over the uh, ground a little bit quicker now. But uh, the gap coming down ever so slowly. Dave Elson's asking on Twitter, at DQ Sport, uh, hashtag home cycling. Why don't one of the ethics guys uh, not take uh, Debuskara out the back, make him work to get back on? It's a dangerous game to play, isn't it? At this moment, it is. Uh, they can do that, and they have to get rid of Debuskara, and it's not the case, so... Um, Attacking uh, rather than... They rather have to bring back... Him. They have to do this. They have to bring back Rollins first. Once they bring back Rollins, then they can start to play the tactical game. But I think uh, Rollins will be really, really tired to go with any of the accelerations. It will be left to uh, De Boucher. Uh, and again, he's just following the wheel through and trying to upset the riders because uh, when you get deep into a race like this and tiredness starts to set in, um, and he's doing he's doing what anybody would do for his teammate in front. Every second he's going to count in this running. So he's forcing Geraint Thomas to ride that little bit further to go up and over and through. And uh, that's likely to make his fellow breakaway companions just a little bit cranky. He's never right off, right off uh, look at Paolini. He's a fighter. Uh, he came across the gap, and um, he's probably the uh, he is the oldest rider in here, but he's got very much uh, a lot of experience. So never write him off.
39 seconds, so it is creeping down, and you feel that uh, Jürgen Rollins is minutes, his kilometers out front are numbered at this point. Surely the man from Assa in Belgium can't hang on for the remaining 25 kilometers. As we have said, he has got the, uh, the best of the wind behind him. And that's to his advantage in the closing kilometers, but he must be very, very tired at this point. Well, the motorbikes have been cleared out. He gets further indication of the, of the uh, gap such as it is. Been plenty of motorbikes for company for uh, Rollins. Hasn't done him any harm, that's for sure. Now inching up around and just hovering around the 40 seconds mark. Oh, just stretching the, uh, stretching the legs a bit, so a bit of cramp might be creeping in there. Over 200 kilometers in the legs at this point. Over 215 kilometers in the legs. More is to the, uh, more is to the point. 134 Grassi saying, does Geraint do too much work? Might have said that on Friday, I think, uh, and you know, and he did win, so uh, definitely not on that occasion. Today, I think uh, it's been share and share alike of those riders with a reason to work. It is, he has to, right? He's on good form. Uh, if he wants to try and win this today, he has, he's in with a, another good chance. Uh, he's up against some uh, very strong riders and uh, obviously um, slightly outnumbered, but um, he's still in it and uh, he has to ride if he, if he feels good. And they have to bring back uh, Rollins. Once they've brought back Rollins, then the uh, tactical uh, ploys will start to happen. Now this is the In Flanders Fields Museum in Ypres. Ayepa, however it is pronounced. scene of uh, so much of the really grim fighting in World War One. We're deep into West Flanders country here. of a population and plenty of them out in the wind and the rain to cheer on Jürgen Rollins towards victory can he hang on 35 seconds his advantage surely it's not enough just too much strength behind third largest city in Flanders this after Ghent and Bruges Famous in the textile industry, as so many of the towns around here were. The Axis uh, sweep across Germany in World War One, of course, was uh, centered on uh, the Battle of Ypres. Now, just over half a minute, they'll start to see the evidence of Jürgen Rollins just ahead of them. It's been a long time since they saw him in this race. Well, Mark Vallis said, we've seen some great racing so far this season, and this is superb respect for them all. It, it is a superb race, isn't it? It is a tough race. Tough man to think your arm warm is off in Belgium today, but uh, Seth Van Mark's feeling pretty hot. Thank you very much. Daniel Oss still fighting hard to get back into contention. I don't think it's going to happen for him. And now through the twists and turns. A few seconds gained by Rollins. Is it too much to believe it's possible at this point, Brian? I'm hoping it's possible because it's been a terrific ride. Um, 34 seconds, it was uh, with 25 kilometers to go, 41 seconds. He could have, could have done without going through Ypres and the uh, twists and turns and having to get out the saddle and accelerate again. Um, so it's still hanging in the balance. It's um, The riders behind really need to still commit themselves. You can still see they're, they're tired. They've got a, a passenger, that'll be in the back of their minds. And 
you know, he's getting a free ride. But the sooner they can get uh, Roland's back, the harder it will be for uh, the Belgian champion to um, to win this race today. There will be a lot of uh, tactical ploy still to play out. So how does Geraint Thomas play it? Should he, should he think about attacking now? They can't. They have to get Roland's back first. Once they get Roland's back, then they can start to, to mess around and start to finesse, but they have to get him back first. Look at the wind blowing the trees and blowing the uh, the Lion of Flanders, and that's the tailwind that he needs. If he's to have any chance of hanging on, he needs a tailwind right now. At the moment, he has it. So just over 20 kilometers remaining in ghent wevelgem of 2015. It's been an epic day in the saddle for Jürgen Rolands and for everyone else indeed who signed on this morning, even those who haven't made it all the way around at this point. Jürgen Rolands of Lotto Sidal, oh, he's really feeling it. Feeling the cramps, every opportunity to uh, post into a corner is some margin of relief, but he knows he's got to get back on the pedals. Has to maintain the focus as well. So easy to... Uh, Make a little error on these greasy conditions. These are the most difficult of conditions, of course. Not exactly sure what level of grip you have. And the attacks, it looks like they've kicked off. Vandenberg has uh, kicked it off. Luca Paolini put into a little bit of difficulty. De Buscara is uh, alive to the danger. Terpstra is going to let a little gap go to Geraint Thomas up front. Thomas immediately responds. He knows that he has to. De Buscara too needs to respond. Terpstra, well, he'll just watch this one. And indeed, if he's not careful, he's going to be put out the back of it. He provides the little bit of a little bit, a lot of shelter indeed for uh, Luca Paolini. But Terps are having to make an effort to get back onto the back of this group, and it looks like uh, Geraint Thomas has managed to drag them back over. But so. Debussy is still there, still there. So um, Geraint swings over. He's not going to get any help from it. Debussy just puts him again in the uh, the gutter. So they just asked the question there, but uh, Stein Vandenberg is uh, putting in a big, big turn now. Oh, he goes again, he goes again, and a few metres gap open up between himself and Geraint Thomas. And there is not a single rider in that group that is not really feeling this, because it's been an absolute battering for every one of these riders. Geraint Thomas winches himself back on. De Buscara is safely in there. Terpstra manages to uh, make the junction after putting himself in a little bit of danger. Luca Paolini clearly doesn't have a lot of strength, but has all the smarts necessary to get in there. If they stall a lot at the, at the back end of this, Paolini will try his luck. The gap now to Rollins inside 18 seconds. Surely, I think he's out on his feet at this stage. That was a huge turn there for uh, Vandenberg. Uh, Geraint uh, rides through, but uh, that was the perfect time of year to Lex to go on the counter-attack, because they can see Rollins in front, so for uh, Terstra, that was the perfect time to try and hit them, because everybody's in their hands and knees. The riders spread wide across the road, looking at each other. Where's the next attack coming from? It's a little bit of relief for Rollins. And now they go again. Vandenberg once more continues the softening up process. He does look super strong. He's put a lot of big efforts in today. Set Van Marco is with him. De Boucher are just hanging in there, hanging off the uh, the left-hand side of his uh, bike, trying to get as much shelter as possible. Vandenberg's uh, attacking from the front of the group. Would he not have been better advised if he's going to go next just to uh, roll to the back of the group? They'd all be looking for it and waiting, but he might just get that extra pedal revolution oh. advantage, and Terpster's, Terpster's gone. gone. Terpster's oh. cracked in a big way. Has he punctured? Trump. Yeah. Is it cramp or is it a puncture? Looks like it, we could have a mechanical issue for Nicky Terpstra. Premier and this puncture. has had a massive impact on the tactical considerations inside 20 kilometers to, grow, to go. Terpstra, well, they've gone for a bike and it's not coming off the roof just quick enough. And this is surely it for Nicky Terpstra. Frustration for the Dutchman. Drama continues in this race. Will he be able to get back in? It's gonna be a huge effort. If he does get back in, and judging by the difficulty he had in responding to Vandenberg's last attack, well, you'd say it's going to be a difficult one for him. So Terpster is out of it. Rollins has been towed back by the last uh, little bit of activity as uh, Luca Paolini has, and uh, Geraint Thomas looking to eliminate Nicky Terpster from affairs. Stein Vandenberg now gets a free ride for a little while. And ever so, uh, ever, well, uh, there they are. They've mopped him up. What a great effort. 
you feel sorry for him now? Well, doff your cap after a fantastic performance by Jürgen Rolands. It now means that we have two Lotto Sudals in there, but surely Jürgen Rolands doesn't have uh, much in the way of legs to contribute to the effort for Jens de Busker. So, de Busker now expected to do a turn, and he does, and uh, Nicky Terpstra oh. finds that the Etix quick step car is just ahead of him. They're probably getting the shouts from the referee uh, car now to ask him to come in front, so... Uh... A little help from the uh, team car, and um, you know why not? He uh, punctured from the group, and he's only going back to this. But it obviously could uh, affect the outcome of this race, so that's why the, uh, the commissaires have been pretty hot in the uh, return of um, Tertra. Yeah, he hasn't taken too much advantage from the cars, but I'll tell you what, he is getting back there. And if they don't want to include the Paris Roubaix champion in their tactical considerations. Someone would want to attack right about now. Thomas has a look at Tabuska. Says, "You fancy a go?" And he says, "No way. I'm going. I'm waiting for the finish." So less than 17 kilometers to go, and Nicky Terpstrom makes it back to the group. He's going to go straight over the top by the looks of this here, Declan. It would certainly be the right uh, move because nobody wants to bring the man on the front, Jens de Buskera, all the way to the line. Geraint Thomas rolls to the front. It's between these seven riders. He's looking, he's looking, here he goes. Here comes Terpstra, they've all been alive to it. Luca Paolini, most alive, and immediately responds. No reaction from uh, de Buschera. Geraint Thomas takes it up. So now Nicky Terpstra, the expected, long-anticipated attack, immediately gets back to the group and immediately draws clear. And who does he bring with it? Well, perhaps the rider that was suffering the most in the break for, uh, for much of the last 20 or 30 k. Luca Paolini tucked into the slipstream with 16 kilometers remaining, and Terpstra is feeling the pain, but he's, well, at the moment, drawing clear of the Geraint Thomas-led group. Has Thomas got what it takes to winch himself back into contention. De Buscara is happy to watch him. Lotto Sudal have two riders, one of them surely a beaten docket at this moment after such a long, long effort. De Buscara looks and asks for mm. one last effort from Rollins. Does he have it to get back with Terpstra? I really would wonder if he does. He's certainly willing, but has he got the legs to do it? Paulini giving Terpstra a turn now, as he knows he must do. Edix quick step in pole position here because uh, of these two. You would anticipate that Nicky Terpstra is slightly stronger and Terpstra, I think, to, I don't think there is a single rider of the seven riders that we're watching on a screen now is really feeling particularly strong, Brian. No, they're all on the hands and knees and it's uh, it's been played out right in front of us. It's been a terrific race today. The 77th edition of uh, Ghent Webelgum. It's not over yet. Uh, Geraint Thomas is still fighting. He's got Debussy there. But uh, Rolands is gone, but if you turn the clock back to uh, 2013 when uh, Paulini went away with Stein van der Berg in the uh, Omloop Het Noisblag and Paulini won that. So uh, again, it's not the uh, person you want to really go with and take uh, Paulini to the line. So uh, De Buschera comes through, Gering Thomas is still in there, Stein van der Berg, Van Marx, they're still hanging in there, but... Uh, Terpstra has got a, a battler with him and Paulini could do the... Uh, do the, uh, the dirty on them again and take this win. Well, it's four riders chasing two. Rollins looked like he was out of it. There's a little bit of a stall behind, and Geraint Thomas goes again. He knows he's got to try and shift those other riders. He's got to eliminate the man at the back of this group here, Jens de Buskere. He's got a couple of metres of daylight on Stan Vandenberg. Vandenberg desperate to try and get back into the wheel of the sky, man, and just to free wheels for a couple of moments and grimaces his way back onto the wheel of the Skyman. Meanwhile, up front, Nicky Terpstra and Luca Paolini working well together, working as well as they possibly can. And now Vandenberg's starting to ride, it would appear. Looks as if uh, Van Mark has uh, lost the wheel now, so uh, getting Thomas towing up Vandenberg now to push it up on his last leg, so is uh, Van Mark, so... Um, Again, it's going to be very difficult to get in. Thomas is going to get no help whatsoever from Van der Berg. So uh, this race is in the pieces. It's got two, then two, then two. Then the man of the day, Roland's uh, just uh, been dropped. It's a bunch of two up time trial pursuits out there now. And uh, I did for a moment think that uh, Sam Van der Berg had gone through. He most certainly did not. 
Flick of the elbow from Sepp van Mark, who's absolutely out on his feet, as Brian says. De Buscara has been eliminated from the equation, or has he? He'll continue to chase any stall from the four riders in front, and he'll be right back into contention. So they know they have to keep riding. Geraint Thomas running a little bit wide on that, uh, on that um, roundabout, but he's still managing to close the gap. Paulini and Terpstra not making any further inroads, and I think it looks like uh, Geraint Thomas is going to bring Stan Vandenberg back into contention. Just put him in the gutter. Just put uh, Stan Vandenberg in the gutter, but it does look as if the big pressure on uh, Lotto Sudal now with uh, De Boucher. He's been sat on the wheels, uh, but uh, in these conditions, sat on the wheels, you still have to make a big effort. So uh, still Terpstra from uh, Paulini. Geraint Thomas is just about cracking Vandenberg. If he can get up there, get his breath and try and go again, he could do the double here. Oh, Vandenberg could well be out of it here if Thomas can get up there in time and then go again. But it's a big, big ask that, isn't it? Because this is an absolutely monstrous effort from Geraint Thomas. He's flying today and Eddie's quick step have the numbers, but only if uh, Stan Vandenberg can get back to them. Luca Paolini looks like he's uh, the lesser of the two partners in terms of the contributing effort. And Geraint Thomas gets back in there. What a great effort from him. Super effort, but uh, again, he can't uh, hang about. And if Nick, Nicky Terpstra looks back, I'm afraid that he may just sit up and uh, wait for Vandenberg to come back to the front. Uh, Gerard Thomas uh, suggests that uh, maybe Nicky Terpstra might want to make uh, some contribution of his own. He'll just wait a little moment. Vandenberg's coming back to them. The key moment here, Paulini is uh, giving all that he can to keep Stan Vandenberg out of it. Puts a little bit of daylight between himself. Uh, he just and the waiting. Thomas He's and playing. He doesn't Jackson. want to go on his own. Paulini doesn't want to go on his own. He's still a long way to go. 11.4 kilometers. He knows he's going to sprint to uh, to win this uh, edition. Terstra, I don't think he'll do any turns because Vandenberg is just behind. He'll want Vandenberg to come back up. So uh, this look as if it's going to be four very soon. But Gerang doesn't want Vandenberg to come to come up. So. Um, he has to keep on pushing on, so very tactical at the moment, still anybody's race. And Thomas is calling for assistance from Luca Paolini. He says, you've got to ride now. Paolini knows that he does, goes to the front, but is his effort equal to or better than that of Stein Vandenberg? It looks as if that's not the case because Paolini rolls off the front and that little stall means that Vandenberg is back on and back in contention. 10 kilometers remaining in an enthralling Ghent Welbo game. The Sprinters classic, not one for the Sprinters, but will it come down to a sprint? Van Mark and De Boucher are still in the distance, probably 15, 20 seconds down. You think that uh, Lotto Sudal thought they were in a very, very good position going into the last 25 kilometers, but unfortunately for them, De Boucher hadn't got the legs when uh, Roland has been caught. So we're down to two Etix riders in front. Terstra and uh, Vandenberg, together with the man on from Gerang Thomas, who won E3, Harold Becker, just a couple of days ago, and also the uh, very intelligent riding of Luca Paolini for Katusha. Well, Dubuskara and Van Mark can sense that they're stalling a little bit up front. They haven't got time to finesse inside 10 kilometers to go, and they, they're desperate to get back into contention. Van Mark has an ally for once in Dubuskara. A man that, uh, well, he doesn't really want to bring back up there, but he knows he needs his legs if he's got to get back up there. Paulini's flicking the elbows all over the place. He's the big danger in the sprint if it remains a sprint of four riders. Could well be a sprint of six. I'll tell you what, we're going on about uh, De Busca's sprinting ability, but he's made such huge efforts to stay in contention here. The thing is, sprinting in these conditions, when they've been uh, riding hard all day after 240 kilometres, it's uh, it's not easy it's at all. It's a different thing altogether. Different yeah. things. It's going to be who's got the strength in the end. It does look as if uh, Paolini looks exceptionally strong today. OK, he's been found missing in parts, but he came across to the group. He looks strong there. And uh, he's been using his, uh, his craft, his experience, to put him in a, a real good position to win this race today. Well, De Busca is out of it at the moment. Do Edix Quick Step resume their attacking ploy or do they put a rider on the front to drill it in a big way? I think all four of them are going to have to ride. Geron Thomas goes through, bottles being dispensed with. Terpstra, a gulp and then a gulp of air. Vandenberg, straight arms there. 
No strength left in the legs, not much strength left up our body either. Van Mark is going to tow the Busker, and he's not towing him back up. Both of them are sharing the effort. They just, they're all over their bikes now. They're just making big, big efforts. How much effort will they have left? The, the final eight kilometers, but it's, uh, it's been a good tag team for uh, the uh, two Belgians to come back to, uh, to make it six. Okay, there's uh, 20, 30 meters to go, but uh, it does look as if they'll make it back to make uh, six in front of the race. Oh, it's tantalizing the gap now, isn't it? It looks as if De Buscara is going to make it. And Van Mark alongside him. Will there be an attack just as the junction is made? And if so, by whom? Geraint Thomas has to, has to get away from this group. You feel that he knows it. 3K out was uh, seemed like a good number for him on Friday. Yeah, it was just over 4K. He went with the E3 Harold Becker and uh, held him off. But uh, it's been a very savage day today. And it's going to come down to uh, who's got enough left in the legs. And uh, Van der Berg has got a problem now. As he hit uh, technical difficulties. Well, Nicky Terpstra has to stop to get a bike. Well, there won't be too many uh, spare bikes. Vandenberg size, and uh, you wouldn't have thought Vandenberg's bike is going to be on the outside of the car either, so I think he's going to have to get a wheel, and it looks as if Stan Vandenberg, so close to the finish. Well, he's still riding. Is it a punctured wheel? Just uh, struggling to see, is he stuck, on, stuck in gear? No obvious clues there. He's uh, with the Etix quick step car, with seven kilometers remaining. And he's back. He's straight back up there. Go to the left and go on the attack. Well, perhaps he went back for, uh, for a little bit of instruction. We know his radio hasn't been working that well. Well, he goes, takes the road less traveled through that roundabout, emerges right alongside uh, Luca Paolini, and then goes again with one of his uh, trademark attack from the front. I'll never catch them out that way. Rolls off the throttle. A brief respite for the riders as the finessing begins. Six riders left in this one. Daniel Oss out of it at this point. We just look at all the faces. They know they've been in a bike race today. Still not over. 6.7 kilometers to go to the finish. Getting very, very tactical now with uh, two riders in this front group. You think that uh, Etix Quickstep would want to try, as uh, you see Wilfred Peters just on the radio, want to try and give them uh, some encouragement to start the, uh, the old one too start attacking them. You see Nicky Terps on the left. He's trying to get to the back of the group to try and surprise them. Yeah, I think Thomas knows what he's trying to do. De Bouchera has been sat on the wheels. Paulini decides to go on the left. He's not one to wait for a sprint now. Just test them out. Three wheels, still 6.3. Little tester attack, hoping someone else would be tempted into an immediate response. I tell you what, a little bit uh, this track stand stuff, Watch and Jürgen Rollins will come back into it. Watch Terps again. He's managed to put himself at the back of the group now. And now Paolini has found himself with a little bit of a gap and has been tempted into committing to it. It's Geraint Thomas once more that uh, feels the responsibility of closing them down. A look behind by Van der Berg, waiting to see where Tetra is. Tetra has to go now. It would make sense to go over the top of that one and make it uh, the Terpstra Paolini duo up front once more. Paolini has a very significant gap now, five and a half kilometers remaining. Too much negative riding behind, so Paulini decides it's time to go. He doesn't want to come to the finish with uh, De Bouchera, so he's decided to go. Etix need to do something here. Tersra is in the prime place to go over the top. And here it comes. Terpstra finally makes the move. Geraint Thomas is alive to the danger. And they all managed to slot in Stan Vandenberg with... Uh, significantly less facility than the others, and Terpster realizes that he hasn't managed to get any daylight and immediately packs that one in. All to the advantage of Luca Paolini. I'll tell you what, Etix Quickstep are not in a very good way at the moment, having two riders in this uh, group behind. They have to try and do something. Geraint Thomas is keeping a minute. It's coming close to five kilometers to go. Etix Quickstep, if they want to win this race, have to do something. De Buscher is there. The Belgian champion, Van Mark, has been struggling ever so, so slightly. Getting Thomas, if he wants to try and win this, has to try what he did in E3 and try and distance the others. Nine seconds now to look at Paolini. 
Oh, it's an amazing game of cat and mouse. I tell you what, that's some serious chess they're playing because Luca Paolini is a thousand percent committed to this one as Vandenberg goes once more. So they're working the old one too. De Buscara feeling the pain as he scrabbles back onto Geraint Thomas's wheel. But as Vandenberg looks behind, he sees that uh, Sepp van Mark is right with him. All the time, Luca Paolini piling the power such as these got left onto the pedals. Total consistency of effort. It's stop start behind him. And I think Paolini's gone. This is very, very dangerous. That's it, they've thrown it away now. Etik's quick step having two in front. He just said to uh, Van der Berg, you have to go now. But they have got uh, a sprinter behind, and off he goes. Van der Berg goes again. Van Mark struggles to make the juncture. And Geraint Thomas isn't enjoying this much either because a uh, few bike lengths between himself and Van Mark. The Busker are next up, Terpstra getting the free ride. Well, looks as if in the 77th edition of Ghent Wevergum, that experience is going to prevail here. Etix Quick Step had five riders in the front group, but Paulini goes on the attack. He must have about uh, here 15, come. 20 seconds now. Here comes Terpstra. He got a little bit of respite before he made that one. Geraint Thomas immediately responds. And that could be significant because there's still three and a half kilometers to go. And uh, Paolini, I'd love to know what the gap is. He's 38 years of age. He's been, well, he's been and done absolutely everything in cycling. He's been with Katusha since uh, 2011, Aqua Saponi before that. Liquigas with the Quick Step squad for a while as well. He's been around a long, long time. Only just 14 wins, he's named. But uh, he's in a great position now with three kilometres to go to take out his 15th pro career win. Yeah, he's had stage wins in Giro d'Italia and it's uh, worth pointing out, as indeed you did a little earlier, uh, Brian, he's won uh, the Omloop Het Neusblad back in 2013. And another significant win in Flanders. It's a tailwind at the moment, as you can see, indicated by the flags. Van Mark is out of it at this point. Terpstra with Geraint Thomas for company is chasing our lone leader, Luca Paolini. Behind them, Jens de Buskera and Stan Vandenberg. Paolini looking only in one direction at the moment. He's right down the bottom of the block, dragging around the biggest gear he can possibly sustain. Just two kilometers remaining for Paolini. Can he hang on? He's out of sight of uh, Sepp van Mark. Van Mark just uh, focusing all his energies on getting back to De Buskera and Stein Vandenberg. And De Buskera is going to have to do it alone if he's getting back to Terpstra and Thomas. 53 11 he's in at the moment, and uh, inside the last two kilometers, a 240 kilometer race, really, really tough conditions. You can just see him down the road. He's got about 15, 18 seconds now. You've now got uh, Terpstra and Thomas. I don't think they're going to bring him back. I think we're going to see probably the oldest winner of uh, Ghent Wivelgum. He's got to be up there. 38, he's one of the oldest riders in the race. Pataki, the oldest design on this morning, but uh, Luca Paolini has been around a long time. Has tasted victory champagne on many occasions. He sees the kite, sees that it's fluttering in the breeze, in the breeze with the... Uh, the tailwind and steals a little look over his left shoulder as if to say, what sort of a gap have I got? Not believing any information he's getting from his team car. If indeed, he's getting any information at this point. And it's all over, surely. Geraint Thomas and Nicky Terpstra are not going to get back to this man now. Stan Vandenberg looks to jump Jens de Buskera to see can he uh, race back up to Thomas. And de Buskera is a beaten docket, there's no doubt about it. So Stan Vandenberg an attempt to close the gap back up to his teammate, but that will be in a race for minor positions. Etix quick step miss out again on a big win because Luca Paolini has jumped them all. He's played his cards to absolute perfection. Not the strongest rider in the group, but one of the strongest, and knew exactly when to make his effort. It's an absolutely brilliant win after one of the most stunning classics we've seen in recent years. It's been a tough day, and he is thumbs up to everyone in Flanders.
cheers, not least his breakaway companions, as he gets his hand in the air and says, uh, yes, I am the winner of Get Well Again for 2015. Chasing behind, it's a great second place, but uh, runner-up slot for Nicky Terpstra, and first and third, two days apart for Geraint Thomas Dan Vandenberg. Shakes his head, unfortunately his team not capable of getting a win. Jens de Buskere, great effort, but unfortunately not quite uh, able to uh, be equal to that one. And uh, Luca Paolini certainly did use his head, which I think might have been what he meant with that uh, gesture as he approached the finish line. Disappointment once more for Sepp van Mark, but he has made a great contribution to some wonderful entertainment this afternoon. Luca Paolini, your victor of Ghent Yeah, we got the ball. And that was pretty much the perfect way to play it, Brian. He pointed to his head, and that's what he was saying, the most experienced rider. And, you know, he watched distance a couple of times, but really used the experience, came back, went at the right time, just when they were finessed and looking at each other. I think that uh, there'll be words in the Etics Quick Step camp again. Uh, but uh, this man here, 38 years old, been round a long time and wins his uh, 15th uh, career win. But this is the, the other man of the day, Jürgen Rollins. What a terrific performance he has put in. And uh, chapeau to him. Yeah, I can be very proud of what has been a great effort. Animated this race with his attack with 77 kilometres remaining and hanging on for a great result. Significant haul of World Tour points. Good result to add to his Palmar. It's not the victory that he might have hoped for, and unfortunately, Jens de Buskere not quite able to hang on there to use his sprint. But there's a big, big cheer for Rollins. He only came up 151 short. He Epic. manages to smile. <laughs> he's absolutely shattered. Daniel Oss must be out there somewhere. I wonder if he's managed to hang on clear of the remains of the main bunch, which will be uh, touring in some minutes from now. Let's get another look at the finish line. The moment when Luca Paolini realizes that it's all worked out absolutely perfectly. Two as if to indicate his uh, this victory, pairing with his uh, Omelut Het Nussblad success from 2013. Two great victories in Flanders. Stand by, with the winner. Super stark for Jürgen Rolands. He had a good seen and all it. Better that he could come up with. Wow. He never did get a chance to take off those leg warmers, did he? <laughs> he never had the time. <laughs> he was always chasing or going on the attack. I don't think he can quite believe it, but uh, just using his uh, racecraft and uh, using his head, it, it worked out. I don't think he could quite believe it that uh, when he went away that uh, one of the uh, Takes Quick Step riders were, didn't go with him. I don't know what they were, they were playing it, uh, Vanderberg and, and uh, Terpstra, but uh, they weren't um, singing off the same hymn sheet. Once again, the spotlight will be on Etix Quick Steps uh, tactical playing. Of course, everything they thought about today would have been about the uh, sprint for Mark Cavendish, wasn't it? Ma è stata una giornata molto difficile. Ho fatto due cadute, per due volte caduta e cambiato bici, però conoscevo il percorso e e sapevo dove stare quando era il momento di stare davanti e dopo la fortuna nel finale mi ha, mi ha assistito questa corsa non era normale con il vento e, e tutti le altre cose no era impressionante a un certo punto non sapevamo che noi se, se continuare però siamo al nord e, e qui è, vera, è il vero, vero ciclismo quindi eh, sono rimasti penso davanti i migliori corridori con più gamba e Sono contento di aver vinto questa edizione che è stata segnata dal, dal vento e dal freddo. Grande gruppo al fine, eh? come l'hai fatto di staccare gli altri? Ma forse non ero il più forte, però ho provato a, a giocare la mia carta, che qualcuno si guardava per la volata, sicuro. E io ho dato tutto in 5 km quello che avevo, ho preso un piccolo gap e sono arrivato con buon margine. Possiamo dire che questa vittoria è la, più, la più, più importante della tua carriera? Sì, penso inaspettatamente, ma penso di sì, sicuramente. Giro delle Fiandre? Il giro delle Fiandre ritornerò al mio posto a aiutare Alexander, Cristo, e vediamo lui come starà domenica. Se non starà bene lui, magari 
potrò provare anch'io qualcosa. Complimenti, yes. complimenti, grazie. The greatest victory of his career, says Luca Paolini. And he's uh, happy to return to domestic duties in Tour of Flanders next week, from what I could make out there, in service of uh, Alexander Christoph. Christoph not quite equal to the intense winds that really shatter things to bits, and Paolini making reference to that in his comments, from what I could make out. The fact that the winds really did cut them up today. And it was noticeable he was the only uh, guy in the group that was able to take a drink while they were being blown all over the road. Disappointment for uh, Geraint Thomas. Disappointment too for uh, Nicky Terpstra, who sprints to runner-up spot ahead of the Welshman. Superb effort from Geraint Thomas, who will uh, look forward, I think, to Flanders next week. We'll be watching him, that's for sure. He seemed very, very comfortable in as much as anyone was comfortable in those conditions this afternoon. Daniel Oss has made his way in. Last remaining member of that breakaway group has uh, finally made it across the line and is uh, worthy of mention, I think. Interesting that uh, Paolini says he'll be working for Christoph again next week in Flanders. Christoph not quite able to do it. And the camera, not surprisingly, picking out Jürgen Rolands for a special tribute. Pain etched on his face is not one of those riders out there that hasn't aged about 10 years, I think. And it's all been worth it. Where is Rowlands thinking it was all worth it right now, just this moment? Now, it's got to be a proud moment for him. He really made this race a great one. And now the group finally makes its way in. Six minutes and 45 seconds in arrears. Is that Christoph to the front of affairs? He'll uh, perhaps have heard already. Sagan it is. Peter Sagan that's uh, trying to get round him, but Christoph's going to hang on to win the bunch gallop for the minor placings. True professionals sprinting it out for the minor placings, and indeed there might be a few uh, World Tour points on offer there, which is always worthy of consideration. Christoph uh, Sagan and the rest. Minor players at the end of what's been an absolute epic, and it does uh, tee us up nicely for Tour de Flanders next week, Brian. Yeah, we've seen uh, three races in the last few days. Uh, Eduardo Flanders split to pieces with the weather. E3, Harrowbeck and better, but uh, it's been three, ha uh, three hard races. There's confirmation of the results. Luca Paolini takes a famous victory in Wevelgem ahead of Nicky Terpstra and Geraint Thomas. Stein Vandenberg makes it two Eddicks quick steps in the top four, but without the top spot. De Buscara, Van Mark and Jürgen Rollins make it four Belgians from fourth to seventh. Daniel Oss uh, is the remaining.